What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another good morning, Tottenham. And it's a big one today as it mm. looks as though our manager search is coming to a close um, with all the news breaking last night from Dimazio, from Fritzio Romano, Alistair Gold, all the reliable ones. And this morning, uh, BBC Simon Stone says that talks with Paolo Fonseca are at an advanced stage to bring into the club. Uh, the dreaded advanced stage. Yeah, I mean, we've had this advanced <laughs> stage quite a few times, haven't we? A, a um, few, yeah. What do you make out of the whole thing so far? 
I think you know, it's, we've had a bit of time to think about it and let it settle in a bit now. Yeah, I still think it's it look compared to where we were a week ago, it's underwhelming. And and compare and a week ago compared to where we were a few weeks ago, that was like in a good position. So this whole manager search has been toing and throwing pretty much of uh, the whole summer. Um and I think it's important that if we do appoint Fonseca, which looks likely now, that I think the fan base have to give at least give him a chance. I feel like a lot of the fan base are ready to uh, give up before he's even had a game yet, and I think it's I think that's a bit harsh for a manager who needs time to uh, implement his methods. He need he need uh, apparently he's a very talented attacking coach. He likes to play on the front foot. His defensive game needs a lot of work. But looking at our defense, it, he's better to focus on our attack than uh, focus on our defensive players. That's that's for sure. And that's probably where Mourinho um one of his failings is he put too much pressure on a I very mean, poor defense. But that's what fans were saying under Mourinho. Let's focus on our strengths. Let's uh, exactly. Let's make our attack our form of defense. And. Look, time will tell whether it's a good appointment or not. I, 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 it's hard to say right now. I mean, obviously, going into this, he hasn't had the best time at Roma. He uh, did a right at Braga. He he kind of didn't do great at Porto either, but he did well at Shakhtar. So. And he did well at Paco de Ferreira as well. Yeah, he did well there in Portugal. I mean, he got them. He got them into the Champions League. He did. Um, I mean, that's unheard of for a team like them. Absolutely unheard of. And the year they got rid of him, they got relegated. They got relegated the following year. So he comes, I think, with obviously a bit of a mixed bag reputation. And and the fact that he's uh, um, freely available and, uh, you know, no one else has really gone for him shows him that, that he's not really that, like, I don't think he's that in demand. But, but you know, listening to what people have said, um, who have played under him or, or, or fans of, of uh, the teams he's managed before... They see a lot of positives in him. They see a lot of positives how he can set up a team, how he can coach attacking philosophy in a team. And that's what we that is part of uh, what we need. I do think I personally do think that Levy is going for the cheap option. He's going for the option that's um more willing to work within the means of the club. And it's no surprise that Conte's on a free and Fonseca's on a free, and yet it's a lot easier to do a deal with Fonseca than Conte because Fonseca probably doesn't isn't as demanding as Conte in terms of transfer market, that kind of stuff. I don't um, think this is Levy's. Um, I don't think this is Levy's uh, man. I don't think this is Levy's um, decision to bring in uh, Fonseca. I think this is Paratici. Look, I think Paratici suggested him, but I'm sure Paratici would have liked Conte as well. You know what I mean? They're good friends. Yeah. And I'm not. There's no like. I'm, I'm sure. Paratici's first choice was Conte, but they couldn't do the deal. Yeah, Conte didn't didn't want to come here under these conditions. That's what I'm saying. That's, um, so that is down to Levy, though. That yeah, that specific uh, thing is down to Levy for sure. I think Levy wanted to bring in a Poch, wanted to bring in a Conte. Mm. Obviously, the Poch thing didn't happen for whatever reason, and uh, Conte. Uh, Levy and Conte were never going to see eye to eye in the way the club's been run. Yeah, but I'm thinking. I, I think Parati. I think Paratici probably was suggested Conte first. I think he was suggested that Conte could have done a great job. Levy um, then having the meeting decided, look, <laughs> you want to spend too much money. You want all these demands, and I, I you know, he, you're not the right fit for us. And and. So he's going for a manager who's going to be a lot cheaper, who's going to be a lot more willing to work within, within constraints because he probably sees this more as an opportunity rather than Conte, who sees it um, as a chance to maybe uh, not ruin his reputation, but a bit too much of a risk. Whereas there's, no, there's not much... Uh, obviously, if Fonseca fails here, it'll harm his reputation. But uh, like, he's got a lot more scope to enhance his reputation than Conte might have done um, if he came to Spurs. So, from Levy's point of view, it makes probably more sense to get someone like Fonseca in, um, who's an up-and-coming uh, attacking manager, probably. That's, that, that's how, how, how he sees it. And, you know, to all these fans that are, are being like, oh, let Levy step aside from the footballing thing, let someone else that knows football to make the decisions, that's exactly what we've done right now. And Paratici has come in. He's come in. His first job is to be tasked with finding a manager. And he's done that with the, without, without even being confirmed by the club yet. So, I mean, we've got to trust in, in something that's going on within the club. And Daniel Levy, I don't think he is making these decisions. I think it's down to Paratici to find his man. And obviously, we heard from, um, you know, reliable sources yesterday that um, they know each other quite well, Paratici and Fonseca. So, look, I'm, I'm not 
completely convinced by Fonseca, especially when I first heard it. But the more and more I read about him, the more I'm warming to him. I think sometimes a club, and for, for example, Pochettino, you probably wouldn't have been that particularly excited when, when you heard about his name, although we knew he did a good job at uh, Southampton. It wasn't like, oh my God, we're getting Pochettino, what a great man. It was like, okay, we kind of have to see how it goes. And it, he fit the club like a glove. And sometimes it happens like that. I think at Roma... Um, he didn't have a very good squad to, to contend with. Looking at, looking at his squad, it really was um, a poor kind of level. I do think we have more quality than Roma in our squad, yes, uh, in my opinion. So he, ha- he, will, he will have a lot more to work with. And, you know, I was a big fan of Graham Potter because despite the fact that um, Brighton were not, were not doing great in the table, you could see how well they play and you can see that they create a lot of chances and they dominate um, games a lot. And, you know, from what I'm hearing, Roma are very similar in that respect. I think they're in the top five teams in Europe for chances created. Yeah, they, they, make, they make the most, I think they make the most, one of the most chances in Europe. So if you have pl- d- better players than, you know, a 33-year-old Edin Dzeko, uh, no disrespect, but, um, you yeah, know, 33-year-old Pedro, you relying on these players, a 32-year-old uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan. These are the players he had to rely on for the majority of the season. And um, it's always going to be very, very difficult to be get to where Roma want to be, which is, you know, challenging top four, top three with those kind of uh, players. And yeah, and supposedly as well, he had a very good start. He had a very good run with Roma until it all kind of, the wheels kind of fell off a bit and he couldn't keep it going. It was all down to injuries, lack of investment, um, and that kind of stuff and change mm. of ownership throughout. I mean, and obviously the pandemic as well. So, I mean, he's he's had a rough ride at Roma, which uh, a lot of it is not down to him. I agree. That's, that's what it sounds like. And I do think that, It'll be a, he'll, it's unlikely that someone like Fonseca will, will be able to convince Kane to stay rather than like a Conte. I think Conte would have had a better shot. But at least Fonseca is um, good in the way he can coach a team. And maybe if we do replace Harry Kane, we give Fonseca a bit of money to play with. He can get the players he wants so we can develop a, a good team around it. And we have to try and be positive, I guess, in, 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 in disappointment, despite the fact he did end up uh, um, finishing seventh and leaving Rome and they replaced him in the one man we sacked in Jose Mourinho. Um, there are some positive elements. It's not all bad. He's not some dud who, you know, we're not appointing Neil Warnock here or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, and from what I heard as well from an article about from Roma fans that um, that were assessing his time at Roma... They were saying that what he does very well is kind of develop players and and bring players through and kind of players that were casted off by the previous management. He kind of got them playing uh, to the best of their ability. So, I mean, that would be music to to Daniel Levy's ears, won't it? Yeah, and 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 that's what we need, isn't it? We need someone who can improve for players that we we have right now. And... um, I think a lot of the players need confidence. A lot of the players need to get back, back to where they were a couple of years ago. Maybe he could be a guy who could help go put us in the right direction in that sense. Yeah, and we've got um, uh, some of his CV highlights so far. Obviously, nine trophies in his career. He took Paco de Ferreira, like I mentioned, the third, uh, their best their best finish in the league in the, in the century. And then they got relegated the next season after he left, which I just mentioned. He, got, he won Braga's first domestic trophy in 50 years. He did three domestic doubles with Shakhtar Donetsk, um, which they've only done five times in their in their history in their previous 30 years. And he got Roma Roma's best European run in 30 years as well. So, I mean, there I is can't some, be right. Why not? Because they got to the semis in the Europa League. That's what I'm saying. That's what Yeah, they, they got to the semis of the Champions League a couple of years ago. Did they? Yeah, because they got their... Uh, I remember they Liverpool beat them in the semis. Oh, well, this must be wrong then. That's what I remember, no? Liverpool oh, beat... Second best, it says. Second Sorry, best, second there you best. go. That makes more sense, yeah. Second best. Um, yeah, and... Yeah, because they've been so poor, haven't they, for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's always going to be difficult for someone like um, to come in and, and completely change it. When was the last time, like, Roma challenged for a title or anything like that? Long it's been a long ago. time, so... Long time. Probably since Totti was there or mm-hmm. something. It's a bit like how, just because Mourinho couldn't overturn Spurs his fortunes but it doesn't make him an awful manager I think I mean, we could say the same for Fonseca just because it didn't completely work out at Roma doesn't make him awful there's a reason why they appointed him in the first place and um, there's a reason why Paratici really likes him yeah. so sometimes when you play that money ball system sometimes other people like can see things that other people maybe it's not immediately obvious to other to other people like you see CVR he did these these things but 
maybe if you look at the underlying statistics, the underlying uh, ways of his management, you can see potential where it can work. And maybe that's what we're seeing at the moment with, with uh, how Paratici uh, sees his appointment. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we have to trust Paratici because especially uh, what Agnelli told us yesterday as well, him being, in his opinion, the best sporting director in the world, a serial winner. So uh, we have to trust uh, the decisions he makes. That's the en end of the line at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this guy is coming in and yes, it's not the appointment that we wanted. We wanted a Poch, we wanted a Conte, uh, we wanted a Brendan Rodgers, someone of that ilk, but... Look, we, it looks as though we are getting uh, Fonseca in and we have to give him as much support as we possibly can and we need to treat him as one of our own and welcome him as one of our own and um, completely support the club and the decision. I mean, maybe he can get us playing good football and we can enjoy watching Tottenham again, just maybe. Uh, but it sounds like he's, uh, from a defensive point of view, he's uh, still has a lot, lot work to do. Yeah. He's a very offensive coach. Yeah, that's true. But again, the defence he had at Roma weren't anything great. 34 year old Fazio with a uh, smalling exactly a centre back so yeah it wasn't the, it wasn't the best didn't exactly have uh, Bonucci and Chiellini to pick from did he mm -hmm. um, so from that aspect uh, it w wasn't great but apparently his like d defensively it's always been a bit of an issue for him yeah he's always been very much a front foot manager but I guess we need to get back to that because we've been, we've been playing with so much fear for, for a long time now that it's uh, good to get back to uh, a manager who perceivedly anyway could get us playing a good attacking football again yeah we got a super chat here from Rowan TA9 and they, he says here is some money for backing Fonseca <laughs> <laughs> um, look a it's guy a bit, look, says scary that you're justifying this appointment I mean look, we have to trust in Paratici that's, that's the bottom line here there's no doubt about it. I'm. It is an it, underwhelming it's, it's, a, it's a bit of pill to swallow, considering we, if we like, you look, we could have had Conte if we, if we, if we would have uh, tried hard enough or, or made a few concessions or met him in the middle, we could have had Conte, and that's a bit. That's very, very frustrating. We're going for a, a manager who's a lot cheaper, a lot less qualified, equipped, and um, that's the frustration. But at the end of the day. He's a manager who could have a lot of potential for us and he could fit us well. We've got to give him a chance. We can't just decide he's uh, rubbish before he's managed a game. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that, you, it, that as a fan base, I, that's not a fan base we, we should be, that just writing off managers before uh, before they've been appointed and exactly. just saying this, this is rubbish, he's, he's bad and le like wanting him to fail almost before he's started just because he's not the big name that we wanted. Of, co of course he's not. I'm not happy that... We've gone for Fonseca ahead of Conte. But if we do appoint him, he'll get my full backing and he'll, I'll have to be optimistic about it. Yeah, exactly. He has to. And we can't We can't go into this uh, negatively. We can't get back into that stadium first game of the season. So and, booing uh, him when we announce and, and him and, and stuff and like that. already you know I mean? a ready negative feeling seeping through. I mean... What's the point? It's doomed for failure from the start if that's going to happen. Exactly. And that that's well, that was a, one of the biggest problems, to be honest, with uh, the whole Mourinho thing. I think people... It's too much negativity. People from the, the start were very negative about Mourinho. And, and that negativity never um, went away. I remember for the first, whole thing. first game, West Ham away, Jose Mourinho. I was singing... I started singing a Jose Mourinho song. Mm -hmm. And people around me was like, why are you singing that guy's name? I was like, the guy's our manager. What do you mean, <laughs> why am I singing his name? Exactly. you got to uh, give him a warm welcome. Try Because otherwise, if he doesn't feel welcome, then if it can affect a manager. It really can. He has to feel the fans are uh, welcoming him in and giving him a fair crack. Uh, we've got a super chat here from Jason Whale saying, guys, I'm really surprised you are supporting this appointment. You have all people normally have your finger on the pulse. Very disappointing. What would you say to that? W well... What would say? He's. It's not so much I'm supporting the appointment. It's that I'm going to give him a chance. To you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say he's going to be a massive failure and oh, what an awful appointment. And it is underwhelming. I'm underwhelmed. I'm not happy that he's the one we've chosen when when there are better options out there. But I'm not going to sit here and say this guy's a dud. This guy's rubbish. You know, he's never going to succeed. Let, let, why are we even bothering? Like, give, give him a crack. Give him a go. And obviously, if it fails. So it's, it's, it's on Levy's head completely, yeah. completely on Levy's head because he could have had Conte, hundred percent. But it could be on Paratici's head as well. And and they, they've got to take responsibility. But I mean, you have to give him a chance. It's, you know, a manager coming in is is going to be a very difficult job for him. But you have got to give him a, a chance to uh, give it a go. Yeah. At the end of the day, um, at the, look, like I keep saying, 
We all wanted Daniel Levy to hand over control of the footballing matters. He has done that. Fabio Paratici has come in and he's chosen his man and we have to back it. We have to back it. We've exactly. No I'm all, what am I going to start from, from the first day of the season? Start wanting Fonseca out from the first day. You know, give him a chance. Mm -hmm. Give him a chance to, to do, do what he um, can possibly do with his squad. And we'll have to see what happens. There's, obviously, there's a good old, old chance it might, it might not work out. And if it doesn't, we... I think there's a good chance it will work out It could as well. work out as well. This guy, this guy isn't... He, he's not some um, guy who doesn't know what he's doing. Although, did you see that one... Uh, that uh, The story about him at Roma last season? Six substitutes. <laughs> he made an extra sub because he didn't know he had made uh, five They're already. They're lucky they lost that game because they would have got uh, chucked out of the tournament. <laughs> so, there, well, like I say, he doesn't know what he's doing. What really about when he came in, in the press conference in the Zorro uh, mask? He seems like a bit of a character. <laughs> yeah. It seems like maybe it could be a bit of fun with him as well. Well, what I was reading on that Roma um, forum thing, it says that Everyone loved him as a person. Everyone really wanted him to do well. Everyone thought after leaving Roma, he's going to go out and turn out to be a very good manager. So I think that f I got a lot of confidence reading uh, that article. And I'll, I'll put it up on, uh, on, I think it's on our Twitter as well, retweets from the extra inch if you want to read it. I think it does give you um, some good insight into him. But we have got... Although if he was that good, why would they... I know, obviously, is, is the allure of Mourinho is so hard to avoid, like leave, just like with Levy, but um, and why would they have sacked him if they, if they were that happy with him or, want, or thought he was doing a great job? Well, look, I they think they wanted sacked. to go in a different direction. I think that what, what he did at Roma was change the club way in terms of they always used to drop teams against the smaller teams and he, he made them a formidable force against those smaller teams. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, against the big teams, against the big teams, they got battered quite often, like really battered. I know. I saw. I saw them in the semi-final against uh, United. They six-two. They got battered, didn't they? Pretty much ruled themselves out. And they were um, two men up at half time as well. Yeah, Old Trafford. To be fair though, I remember watching the second leg a bit. I was watching a bit of the second leg, and I think um, United took the lead. Then it went to like two-one or three-one, and they missed some mental chances mm. at three-one. It could have easily been four-five-one. That's your XG for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why they got such a high XG. Yeah, probably. Um, um, but look, we got. Serial. We got Robio Agresti back on the channel from yesterday. Let's bring him on. Let's see what he has to say. Romeo, how are you doing, my friend? How are you? So, guys, I'm ready to leave the Juventus correspondent to become a sports correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll welcome you with open arms, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. How are you, guys? Are you excited? the for Fonseca news? No. Well, well to well. be honest, I'll tell you the truth. Yesterday when I heard the news, when you messaged us, I was like, I was very angry when I heard the news. And then reading more and more about him, I'm kind of more warming to the, to the sight of him and to the idea of him. But I want to know, on your opinion, uh, what is he all about and what will he bring to Tottenham? So, guys, mm, I think that uh, he is not a huge name, but uh, I'm sure that he's a, uh, an underrated coach because um, he did very well in, uh, in Rome. I think that uh, it's not easy to work there because uh, there is a big pressure, uh, but uh, he, was, um, he was able to show something important, especially in terms of play, because uh, he likes to play offensive, but uh, always uh, to find the right balance. He likes to win. Of course, there it's not easy to win. I think uh, this is a smart choice by Fabio Paratici because he knows very well Fonseca because he did the opportunity to evaluate him uh, in the Italian Championship. So um, I think that uh, he can do great things uh, at, uh, at uh, Tottenham. Mm. Do you think people are being, being too negative because maybe he's not the biggest name um, uh, around? And especially last week, Spurs were so strongly linked with Conte, it kind of feels a bit underwhelming to go to a manager who's just been sacked by Roma for finishing seventh. But maybe you feel like Spurs fans should maybe give him more of an opportunity to show what he can do. But my question is, uh, there are more coaches available better than Fonseca? I don't think so at all. Mm. I'm, I, I think this is a smart choice. Of course, you need to be patient. <laughs> you need to evaluate his job. Uh, then we see what we have, we happen with uh, with Fonseca. But uh, he's a very smart guy. I like him uh, so much in terms of human aspect because he's a gentleman. Uh, he, he, his dream is to work uh, in the Premier League. So 
Now he achieved this goal, and I think that uh, it could be a, a, the good name to open a project. Of course, it's impossible, as I said yesterday, to say right now that Tottenham will fight this season to win uh, the Premier League, to win the FA Cup or the other titles. I think the most important thing for Paratici now is to open a, 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 a cycle with, uh, with a new manager, and he knows very well what uh, Fonseca can do. What do you think um, Fonseca's kind of strong points of his managerial um, strategy is? I think that uh, he's smart enough to understand the skills of the roster because maybe he can play with the 4-2-3-1. Uh, he can play with uh, three defenders. Uh, he's, a, he's a very good coach. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, he had a very good experience in his career because he started to work in... In Portugal, then he moved on Shakhtar, he won there. And uh, I think that uh, he did a very good job in uh, his uh, two years uh, at uh, Rome. Maybe, maybe he, uh, he had some issues with the, the problem in terms of uh, substitu substitution, subs against the <laughs> men. Uh, and, and then uh, it was a nightmare, the match against the main United. Yeah. Uh, the second leg. But it's a good coach he's a very good coach and i'm pretty sure guys that uh, he will uh, he will do a good job at tottenham some people say uh, there are some people saying he wasn't sacked by roma his contract just expired because they wanted Mourinho. is that right he wasn't actually sacked yeah, by roma definitely, definitely. but the guys he had the problems uh, uh, with the board because uh, <laughs> you, you you can't understand the uh, what means uh, to work uh, at the IC Roma? Because uh, we, when you lose uh, a match, it's a nightmare. Uh, but uh, he's a, a good guy. He's a very good guy. And uh, he did two years there. So then, uh, of course, uh, the, the board, the new the new board, because uh, uh, Mr. Friedkin is the new owner of IC Roma, has decided to change coach. But uh, I think that uh, Fonseca... Is uh, a is a very top coach. It's a very good coach, not top coach, but he could become in the future a top coach, especially in a, a good club uh, like Tottenham is. From mm. what I'm hearing is that um, his defense, his attacking play is very, very good, but defensive work needs kind of work to it. And Roma in the last couple of years, I mean, any time they came up against like a lower league side, they played very well. They won the game more, more likely than not. But when he came up against like a top six side, they more than likely got beaten very, very well by a lot of goals. I mean, why was that? Depends on um, the skills of the squad, guys, because uh, if you have Hurricane, if you have uh, the guys that there are at Tottenham, I think that you can do uh, very offensive football. I'm sure that Fonseca will do that because he likes uh, so much the offensive football. He wants to dominate the match. He, he wants to put uh, aggressive, uh, to be... Uh, of course, of finding the right balance, but offensive football. Uh, I'm now I'm curious to see what uh, uh, Fabio will do in terms of uh, market, market because uh, um, I think that Fonseca will try to play with 4 2 3 1. So maybe you need to buy a very good midfielder that mm. he can play in front of the defense. But uh, um, it's a good choice, believe me, guys. And uh, you, must, uh, you must believe in Fabio and you must trust in uh, Paolo. Do you think Fabio uh, Paratici's first choice was Conte and that Spurs just couldn't get a deal done maybe for Conte? Is that obvious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his first choice, guys. He tried to to appoint the Antonio Conte as a new sports coach. But uh, as I told you yesterday, I think that Antonio, after two years uh, so intensive at Inter, wants to take a break. And then, uh, of course, uh, Antonio Conte is a serial winner. Paolo Fonseca... He wants something, and it is the most important thing, but uh, he's a different coach. So, mm. in terms of mentality, but uh, I think, I repeat, guys, uh, the, you are not you, but um, the Spurs family is uh, are underrated, this coach, because he's mm. a good coach. Interesting. And um, is there any chance he can bring anyone from Roma with him? Nicola, Zaniolo, maybe someone like that? No, Nicola Zagnolo will stay at, uh, at Roma. 
I told you that I, I say you that because also Juventus were interested in San Zaniolo, but his uh, recovery from a, the second bad injury of his career, and I think that he will stay there and it's not for sale also for Jose Mourinho. Mm. And one more question, actually, because um, I want to. I wonder how, um, if you know anything about maybe how he's perceived from a man management point of view. Because one of the most important jobs he's going to have to do now, if he gets appointed, is trying to convince Harry Kane to stay at Tottenham or trying to convince Harry Kane that Spurs can be competitive under him. And is he known for having very good man management skills and getting and motivating players and things like that? Because that was one of Pochettino's greatest strengths. I remember when he was manager at Tottenham, being able to um, talk to players is really uh, man-to-man and stuff like that. Is uh, Fonseca known for that kind of thing? Maybe he's not a, a huge personality, especially to say, okay, I go to Spurs because there is Fonseca, but uh, you can change your mind because uh, yesterday, what I said, I say, now you have Fabio Paratici and he will be the king of the Spurs. So uh, I'm sure that he will be able to... To choose the right players to develop this kind of project uh, but uh, guys because uh, i watched i have seen uh, the comment uh, on your video you must believe in fabio because uh, yesterday i said fabio is the best sport director in the, in the world and they repeat that so uh, you can't win uh, nine titles in a row if you are not a top player of course, now you must be patient. You must be patient because it's a new world for Paratici, it's a new world for Fonseca, but, but uh, you must be united to create the, a new cycle. I'm sure that uh, both are very, are, are good, are very good guys. And, and, you, and you think maybe that because with Roma, um, you see with the underlying statistics, you know, they create more chances and, and maybe, you know, with the expected points, they're, they're, they're a lot higher than the, the, in the table than um, where the actual position is. And maybe those underlying statistics don't get seen by a lot of fans. And maybe um, Paratici can see that and maybe he sees a potential in, in this manager that other people don't see. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, um, Tottenham will buy three, four new players. Uh, not a revolution, uh, an evolution. It's a different topic. Yeah. And and um, in relation to your answer about Fonseca, I can add just one thing: that uh, for AS Roma to play a semi-final in the Europe is an unbelievable thing, and uh, he did it. He did it. Of course, he, he, he lost uh, not in the bed in uh, in a good way against uh, Man United, but uh, I think that he has done a, uh, he has done a very good job at uh, Roma. Uh, two years there, it's impossible to stay there for two years, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Jose Mourinho we have uh, a lot of tra- of, of troubles. Please, okay. Romeo, absolute pleasure as always getting your insight. You told us yesterday Paratici is the best in the business and you told us today Fonseca. Everyone, just be calm with Fonseca and we need Guys, to support the guy. The title of, your, uh, of, your, of the video is uh, Fonseca is underrated. Underrated. Okay. Romeo, <laughs> absolute brilliant stuff. Thank you very much Thanks, for coming Rick. on again. See you in the next day, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm 100%. Sure. <laughs> See you soon, Romeo. Cheers, Cheers Romeo. Good guy. Thank you. Good to get well, him on. It's always, his, his, he, he always leaves me feeling more positive. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what to say. <laughs> exactly. He knows how to make us not be too downhearted about what, what's going on at the moment. Um, he seems pretty positive about the, about the Fonteca appointment. He seems to think, contrary to what a lot of people think, that um, he did quite a good job at Roma. So but maybe, the thing, the maybe, thing maybe is, people is are being too downhearted on from him. From what we're seeing from, on Twitter is people that don't know anything about Fonseca. Of course, That's they're, the just, they're just saying not a big name. And they're yeah, saying they're a saying guy the got sacked from Roma. And they're putting two and two together and making 20 A thousand. guy got sacked from Roma and that's it. But he didn't get sacked is what we're saying. Yeah, his he contract ran out. new contract. Because they wanted Mourinho. And that's the um, truth. But then again, it's you know he did finish fifth in his first season and seventh in the second, so it's not like he improved them in yes, that in that yes, aspect. But yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, we got some super chats to get through. Essa El Shamari just says, "Good morning, boys." 
Good morning to you. Good morning to then you. Then EDM says, what's Fonseca like on disciplining players? Uh, Roma collapsed second half season and when that happens, it can be a sign of lack of discipline. I think that was probably for uh, Romeo because I don't really know what... Uh, well, I know that um, last season, Roma had like halfway through the season, they had like a major injury crisis and that's mm. that it also kind of contributed to that. So they collapsed. They had a pretty good first half of the season, didn't they? Yeah. I remember watching them. Who? What game was it? I remember. I think it might have been like against AC Milan. I think Ver, Jordan Virtue scored a winner with a cracking twenty-five yard. And I think I was looking at this Roma side, not bad. But then obviously the wheels fell off. But their squad was nowhere near good enough for top four. No, let's be honest. No, they're relying on old players. So yeah. many old players they're relying on, and I know in Serie A you can get away with it a bit more, but it's only so much when you got look at the top of the league. You got like Lukaku and Martinez up front for Inter. You know it's hard to compete against that when you're relying on Jeco, Pedro, and and Mkhitaryan, who are all pretty very much past their peak. And there's another one there from Julio M that says we wanted attacking, free flowing football. Not many coaches available that fit the bill. And that's true. I feel like he's just a cheaper version of uh, Graham Potter, to be fair. That's how I feel like at the moment. And um, I was in favour of getting Graham Potter because he, uh, at the time. So I, can't, I don't want to be too uh, downhearted about uh, Fonseca, despite the fact that he is uh, not what we would have hoped for, probably, at the beginning of the window. Look, at the end of the day, it's important to go into this with your eyes open. You have to go into it with your eyes open in terms of what we're bringing in. But also, you need to look at the good things that he is coming. You need to look at the negatives and the positives. You need to weigh everything up. You need to look at it objectively and then make a decision. Not just say, oh, this guy, I don't know who he is. It's going to fail from the get-go. Mm -hmm. you, you need to give them time. You need to think about it properly. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest. I'm just going to put the link up if, uh, for the call-in show. So if any of you want to come in and, um, and give your opinions on Fonseca, the link will be in the community section in the next five, uh, one minute, basically. Um, a bit of an update from Sky Deutschland. They are saying a deal to take Borussia Mönchengladbach forward Marcus Turam to Tottenham is not yet in the bag. That's their, that's their update in terms of Marcus Turam because apparently Spurs are now in advanced talks with uh, Gladbach um, to bring the forward to Tottenham, um, the French forward who's going to be at the Euros this summer. It got a lot of people very excited last night, but they're saying it's not yet in the bag. So I think I, I, I can't see this one being sorted out before the Euros is over, but apparently, you never know. Uh, what I read last night is that Paratici tried to sign him for Juve. For Juve? So maybe he knows how good he is. And, and reportedly has a 30 million euro release clause. So it all kind of makes sense that it would be definitely be interested in Paratici um, wanted him at Juve. So it all makes a lot of sense. But I feel like if we don't, I definitely feel if we get two around, it probably means Bell's not coming back. I would assume. Yeah. But I mean, out with the old, in with the new. Turam is an uh, up and coming star in Europe in football, isn't he? Yeah, one of them. I mean, he's not like he's not like a guaranteed starter for France, but he's a very, very talented player for. Uh, and you know, to get in a France squad with all that talent shows how good of a player he is. Yeah, um, but you know, he's twenty three years of age, mm -hmm. and uh, he's getting better and better every year. He is. He had a great season with uh, um, Gladbach, and apparently, he's he can also play up front as well, quite to quite a good standard as well as on the wing. So. Um, he's definitely improved his goal contributions this year and he'd definitely be a very exciting appointment very so exciting yeah, he appointment he actually got more goals in the league the year before okay well I f I'm saying goal contributions I said oh goal contributions yeah I f I'm pretty sure for um, both goals and assists no I think th this year was probably his best year uh, he's had three appearances for France well I mean he's one that I'd really like to get over the line um just while we're waiting for a few people to join, I just want to let you guys know about our um, watch-alongs and live screenings that we're doing for each and every England game throughout the Euros. The links to buy tickets for the first three games are in the description below. So you've got England-Croatia on June the 13th, this Sunday, and then the following Friday, you've got England against Scotland, and then on the following Tuesday, you've got England against Czech Republic in the Euros. Um, so if you want to come and join us with each ticket you get a free beer as well come and join with us come and have a beer with us and uh, yeah just indulge in the atmosphere and also you get your chance to be live on YouTube and have your interview live on YouTube as well after the game so do come and join us link is in the description below um, we've got Cy waiting in the background but it looks like he's underwater 
Is he swimming, is he? Is he swimming? <laughs> <laughs> Drowning in Fonseca news. Yeah, once it, once we get his name changed on the strap line, we'll uh, bring him on. But um, yeah, really looking forward to these uh, Euros. And also our Score Torito uh, League is a Euro 2020 predictor league. Um, if you do want to get involved, the winner will win £100, £100 in cash. You've got a deadline of up until, when is it? Tonight or tomorrow? I think to tomorrow, join. yeah. Um, so so you, need to get, you need to get involved ASAP to be in with a chance to win £100. Absolutely free to play. So get involved, sign up for the Predictor League and the link is in the description below right now. So uh, absolutely free to play. Let's yeah, get everyone we've get got involved. we nearly 300 users on the app now. Mm-hmm. So get involved. If you win, if you win it, you can win at hundred pounds. Right, well, free. Yeah, hundred percent. It's Why a great game to involved? play. Really good fun. All you have to do is predict every outcome of the Euros, predict the winners, and predict the golden boot as well. And it's a league um, table. And, and if you finish table. top of the league table, you win it. All right, let's bring Sai on. Sai, what's going Look on with your camera today? The screen. What's, what's going, going on? on with your screen, Sai? I have um, history of breaking phones several times per year. I see. Was this after you heard the Fonseca news? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> threw the phone on the floor. Had enough. And the consequence has been massive cracks across the camera. So apologies for the <laughs> underwater display right now. Give me your um, your opinions on the Fonseca uh, news. Um, no, I'm, I'm with you guys. Like, obviously, I want to you know back whatever the manager is chosen. I mean, that's the only way forward for us. Like with the Jose thing, you're absolutely correct. I do believe like, I was, I mean, I was, I was happy that he was appointed because I think he was a top manager. Um, obviously it didn't work out for one reason or another, but I think that, um, there was always a bandwagon that always would be because of his Chelsea history and stuff like this. So Francesca, like, you know, we don't, we don't have that kind of like rivalry situation. So there's no real, reasoning behind us to not back him the only thing i would say is i'm not convinced with his like background if that makes sense compared to who we have been linked with recently we all know the names that have been thrown left right and center and come quite close so i think a lot of the frustrations out there are coming from that in the sense that one is taking far too long to get a replacement two we seem to be doing the usual thing of, you know, tr- going for the high end, but actually it completely falls apart. And then we're stuck with someone, in all honesty, that no one really knows about, to be honest, in in England. Um, you know, we can all see the stats from last year and the season before. They're not, they're, they're kind of underwhelming to me in that yeah. sense. But, you know, <laughs> nothing surprises me anymore. And I think the only choice we've got, if, if it is him, is to to get behind him and the team, whatever whoever has left of the team at that point, to be fair, we still don't know. So it's a difficult one, guys, because I'm I'm all up for backing them, but I'm I'm disappointed with the way it's going, um, with the names that we have been linked with or being close to, um, and just not done enough on and it comes back to ambition again, doesn't it? Because right at the beginning, you know, if we were in a better league position we could possibly have grabbed some even more well-known names or more experienced managers, more winners, isn't the case. So we've got to be realistic that actually top managers as well as players are going to be very difficult to get hold of now because of the situation the club has put ourselves in. You know, Conte and all this, they're going to come in and go, right, well, I'm sat here in the Conference League. There's not much money flowing about, so what's the point? Why would I, you know, ruin my potential big career that I've built? For this mess, so it's it's almost like um, I would say an easy option to go with Fonseca. I don't like I said I don't know much about him, but it seems like it will probably be cheap. It will probably be easy to manage, and not too much expectation in the sense that the situation that we're in currently, financially, position-wise, it ticks those boxes. And we know Daniel Levy, and it that's how I see it panning out. That's where I think it is right now. It's difficult. 
Well, mm. Sai, do you think, you know, with 50 days now, I think over 50 days yeah. without appointing a manager, is it important now we're just decisive on, on, on him if that's the one we've chosen? And um, that's what Paratici is saying, you know, seeing as we can't get Conte, he's his cho- next one in line. Is it important we're just decisive and get him through the door? Or would you rather Spurs maybe be a bit more patient and see if anyone else pro- props up? It's a difficult situation as well with the Euros. I mean, there's quite a few good managers you know, managing the European teams throughout the tournament. And I, I wonder, you know, th- there's a catch-22, isn't there? Because the tournament's going and then all the players have maybe two, three weeks holiday and then we're straight back into it. So it's not like we can wait till the Euros are over because we need that that whole planning for the pre-season of players who are and are not there because of duties and whatnot. We're a, we're a really big crossroad here. And I think... Again, it's the disappointment I think we're all seeing of the names that we were linked with over the last few weeks have now perspired to to this particular choice. I mean, it's still not over the line. It, it may not happen. We we still know this, but True. it's kind of like a downward spiral of of ambition constantly for a number of seasons, and particularly this summer, it's just emphasising what we all know. And I'm disappointed. I'm. I, we can't be more disappointed other than if this is the guy, we have to back him, just get it done so that the team can prepare. I'm pretty sure the new um, you know, director of football appears to be coming along. That is key. But I do think that he would only come if there's money available. And the only way we're probably going to get money is from not mentioning names, we'll get sold this season to fund the transition that we need to do. And irrespective of the U.S. assets that were sold over the last couple of weeks by Joe Lewis and Enoch, I think the funds will have to come from a specific player being sold and maybe a couple of others. That's the Moose only way Sissoko, director right? of football would... <laughs> well, the, it's the only way a director of football would have come in of his stature. Um, and it, it seems like we've balanced that whole cost element versus a manager that we'll just make do for a period of time while we're in this transitional period, try and get us into European football each season. Um, who knows, guys? It, it might be a, a Wenger kind of thing where you know, he is kind of known. It's not it's very similar, but something might transpire. It might actually click. We don't know. Um, but I think the frustrations are just built up for so many seasons, especially this season, you know, it's difficult to be positive um, and kind of accept where we are right now and with this kind of named manager. It's All difficult. Right. All right, Sai. Absolute great getting you on as usual. Yeah. Um, hopefully you can fix your phone and then uh, <laughs> we can see you properly next time. Well, I'll see you guys on Sunday anyway. Yeah, looking forward to it, mate. All right, guys. Come Cheers, on your Spurs. Nice Come on your Spurs. Nice one, Sai. And yeah, if you are like Sai and want to get involved on Sunday, do go in the description and click the link and buy a ticket to come and see uh, the England game on Sunday. There's also tickets there available for the Scotland game on Friday night and the following Tuesday against Czech Republic as well. So come down, come and watch with us. It's going to be a great day. Uh, sorry, what were you about to say? It's going to be a great event. I'm just going to say, I think you'll spot on with what you're saying there, Sai. And also, I think it's just this, this appointment it's just so representative of where we are as a club at the moment. The whole managerial search is so representative of what we've all been saying about Levy and Enoch for, for the past few, few months, really. And, you know, every time going for the cheaper option, going for one that has a bit more, uh, 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 that costs less money, but maybe uh, the, having, having to pay a risk to reward. We've seen it with players so many times that we've gone always gone for the cheaper option. And it just seems like we're doing that with a manager as well. That's yeah. what it seems like. Let's be honest, Pochettino as well was a cheap option when we brought him in. Yeah, but I'm saying, well, like with players, you know, always going for um, not the first choice of what the manager wanted mm-hmm. and paying the price for it. Are we doing the same? Are we going to be doing the same with the manager now? I mean, I hope not, but it just it just seems representative. It's a perfect representation of Spurs right now, having Conte and Fonseca both available on a free and going for Fonseca. I mean, mm. it's just so representative of Spurs. That's that's what Spurs are about at the moment. Yeah, but can we realistically? Uh, give Conte what he actually wanted. Can we realistically challenge for a league title next season or the next two seasons? We have to, well, if Conte, if we have to give Conte the tools that he needs. Mm. But we, yeah, 
but you know, there everyone knows the kind of cash problems everyone's going through at the moment. Are we going to be able to spend that much money to get us fighting up there? Yeah, but these opportunities, I have gained, having the op op opportunity to get Conte in, they don't come around. But is it realistic? Often. Is what I'm saying. Why not? Because we don't. I like rest. You said we're a rich club. We're top ten <laughs> richest club in the world. In the we world, we are. We are. But so are Real Madrid and and Barcelona. And Barcelona are only uh, signing freebies at the moment. Yeah, but that's because they've spent God knows how much money on stupid things. We haven't done mm -hmm. that. We've we been have. very we smart of our money. Yeah, but that's different. That's uh, that's on the long term uh, loan, which you have to pay off over the long term. We have to pay it off straight away. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think we have more money than we're letting on. I really do. Probably. Um, all right, let's keep going. Who else have we got waiting? We've got Chris. Let's speak to Chris. Right, Si. You're right, Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you doing, mate? How are you right? doing? Well, I'm not too bad. I'm just a bit surprised with this um, Fonseca. He, he wasn't even in the running, was he, at first? No one had even mentioned him. Well, he was slightly linked right at the beginning, but nobody gave him a, a, a moment to talk about because nobody really knew who he was, to be honest. See, for me, everybody was talking about Poch and Conte, right? Now, I'm going to give um, Fonseca a chance because everybody deserves a chance. But realistically, if he lasts until December, I'll be very surprised. Wow. I'll be very surprised. Because if you look at how we have finished, we finished seventh in the league, yeah. got rid of Jose, and now we've taken exactly the same sort of manager who finished seventh in the league. It just doesn't make sense. And I know Levy it doesn't like to put his hands in his pocket, but it looks like we were going for a Ferrari and they don't end up with a Kia. Yeah, I mean, it seems as though we do that with every single target we try and bring into the mm. club. I mean, um, trying to go for Carlos Tevez and bringing in Luis Saha springs to mind. Trying to trying to yeah. go for uh, Gary Cahill and bringing in um, Ryan Nelson uh, springs to mind as well. So, I mean, it happens time and time again at Tottenham Hotspur, you know, trying to bring in Sadio Mane and, and ending up with Musa Sissoko as well. I mean, it happens time and time again. But at the end of the day, when you delve deeper into his um, kind of managerial career and what he's about and what have you, uh, yes, uh, he finished seventh in the league with Roma. But I think there are a lot of other factors in there why it didn't work. And I think when you actually delve deeper into it and think about what the Roma fans think of him, I think um, they think he's going to be a top manager in the future. Maybe. We'll soon see. But the Italian league is a hell of a lot different to what it is the Premiership. That's for sure. True. Let's see. Yeah, let's see if he can last. Because at the moment, our defense is absolutely atrocious. Let's face it: we've got Dyer and Sanchez and yeah. Vero, Aurier, Doherty, Davis. Right? I hold because I've seen a bit about him. He's a, he's a very very attacking manager, which is what we all want to see. But his defensive side is not great. Hmm. Not isn't, great that, isn't that what everyone complained about Spurs putting too much pressure on their defence we need a more of a front foot manager who can use the best out of a very attacking base squad yeah but at the same time we, his goal difference in Italy was absolutely appalling let's face it it was absolutely appalling now our, our goal difference this year is going to be a, a, a huge disgrace if we don't upgrade on the defence we need so leaving now okay you bring in Fonseca in, give him the funds to by the defence we really need to shore it up. Just give us the money that we need to 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 you know just put the players there we need. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's not going to work unless uh, we don't do that, and I guess that's the reason. Uh, Paratici was brought in and ultimately Paratici has chosen Fonseca, albeit his second choice, but he has chosen him. Yeah, well, I'm going to keep the faith for now. I'm going to give him till Christmas to see how we're getting on it. And then if that, they should look at look elsewhere because it, it's going to be a case of another Martin Yol and Juan de Ramos situation, isn't it, really, if you think about it? Yeah. I mean, we'll have to see what happens. Um, we'll have to see what happens, how it plays out. But you have to support the manager when he comes in. You just have to. I mean, yeah. everyone has to. And And if you let negativity seep in from the beginning, then it's going to be doomed from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. See, I've seen a lot of the negative comments already on um, on the streams recently about Fonseca. OK, yeah, I am a bit disheartened that we could have had Conte, but we ended up with Fonseca. We could have had Poch, but we ended up with Fonseca. Obviously, those managers weren't going to come. and It was all like a smokescreen. Mm. Mm. 
it seems as though I mean I mean it, it just it seems, seems like... as though it just seems as though they brought these names up uh, just before the uh, the season ticket renewals and straight after season ticket renewals we hear about Fonseca. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. It's like the what Levy and Inich have actually done is just pulled the wool over the, the season ticket holders' eyes. And to be honest with you, Benison, right now, I heard a lot from the the, the supporters trust during the ESL, the European Super League. No, we don't hear a word from him. Why aren't they speaking up? Yeah, I don't know. Why aren't they speaking up now? Why are they not speaking up now? He was quick to hype it up during the European Super League when we were all really upset with um, Enich and Levy. Let's face it, we were all fuming. Mm -hmm. But now, we don't hear nothing from them. They haven't said a word. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I guess we'll just have to see how that one plays out. But Chris, absolute pleasure having you on, my friend. And do call yeah, in again. Man, definitely. Definitely, Ben. Definitely, Sim. Been a pleasure talking to both of you. Cheers come, on, you my friend. Come, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Uh, yeah, it's difficult. Here from Al Esa El Shamari saying, I'm trying to be optimistic here. And the more I read about him, the more excited I get. And that's exactly how I was feeling, to be honest. Yeah, I think when you can read about all the positives what a manager can bring especially what he's done previously and what kind of manager he is there is a bit of a, there is an element to say look this guy can maybe can be can fit us like a glove potentially if if we uh do things in the right way it's just i think the how how this move represents this club mm. is just pretty damning and that's what people are worried about and that's what people are frustrated about and i can completely understand that completely yeah. understand i that. understand it but you gotta have a look you gotta look at it um as a whole picture and objectively as well you can't just look at it like that and yes of course we all wanted a big name we all wanted a potch and we all wanted a conte but once this guy comes in you know it looks like he will come in now you have to look at it um from all aspects and you've got to delve deeper into what he's all about not just think about oh he's not a big name and just brush him to the side yeah but it's not just about that it's just about how it's about the board again it's just about it's more it's more it's more frustration not on said not necessarily on the managers frustration on the board yet again going for the cheaper um cheaper option who's more of a risk yeah, basically I completely agree with that and that and that's that's what everyone is frustrated about and it, and it, i can un i completely understand that um people are sick and tired really of spurs never going for the best and always going for second best i get what you're saying and i completely agree with what you're saying but ultimately, the board are making these decisions. And yes, these messages right here are still going to stay there. Mm -hmm. They're still going to stay there. Our, our feelings towards the board or my feelings towards the board has not changed whatsoever. But what, all I'm saying is once this guy comes in, you've got to delve deeper into what he's about. You need to no, do your research. That, yeah. You need to support the man. You can't go into the season with these negative feelings. Apart mm -hmm. from directing at the board, fine. But you can't direct it at the manager. Not yeah, not straight away anyway. Um, let's bring on Jamie. Hi guys. Hey you Jamie. Right, Jamie, how you doing, mate? Hi. Yeah, good. Thanks. You're right. Yeah, good. Thanks. Good. Thanks. What's your uh, feelings on the Fonseca news, my friend? Um, I think I'm a bit mixed feelings. So I'm not too sure to be honest. Um, I, I think we've got to give him a chance. You know, I. Uh, with his style of play, I think it's gonna it's gonna suit us, and also with the signings, maybe that will help us. But I still don't think we're gonna get the, you know, obviously we're not gonna get big players, so it, it's it's really got to be like a bit like Poch, like bring in someone, um, seeing how they are, viewing their talent, you know, doing a bit of digging. So it, it's gonna be like a, a similar to a project as well. Um, whether it's going to work out, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I feel like you should give him a chance because realistically, we wasn't going to get anyone big. Um, I think with the content Pochettino, I think that was that was just a cover up to say, look, we're trying to be ambitious, we're trying to bring someone in big, but no one is coming. So, but I think long term, it was always going to be someone you know average or not as well known. Jamie, do you know uh, much about him? No, I don't, to be honest. Uh, only what I'm hearing recently. Um, but before that, no, nothing at all, to be honest. Um, um, do you agree with the kind of, I mean, from what I'm seeing on Twitter and around social media and stuff, it's all kind of very negative about uh, Fonseca and about this um, appointment. Um, do you agree with the negativity? 
Uh, yeah, I do with a certain te- uh, extent. Um, I always say give manager a charge. I think, you know, you shouldn't judge anyone, um, even like Mourinho. But it, I, I do get it because, you know, um, I think it reflects where we're going as a club. Mm. Because, yes, he can be successful and obviously that would be great. But it shows you, like, his appointment shows you what we've become. We've become, like, to me, like that mid-table, you know, 10th team again. And it's a shame because we set our sights so high and we were getting there and we we finally started believing, you know, because prior to Poch, um, we had this before, you know, Santini, you know, managers like that. We, we've gone through this cycle and they don't last. And there's only a few managers who can really do well um, or up and coming or well-known. And we're not going to get a well-known manager. So with Poch was the only one I felt that, OK, we found a gem here and he was rare as well. And that's not going to happen too many times in, in you know, in the history of Tottenham. And with the, like, Pochettino, because... Funny enough, um, I wasn't at all surprised because um, just after Mourinho, like I put a bet on him to be the next Spurs manager. He was about thirty-three to one because I, I felt PSG was was uh, going to sack him because I felt um, that you know it's a lot of pressure on that job. If you if you don't deliver like the league or Champions League, they will change quickly. So that's the only reason I thought he would go back and Levy would definitely take him back. But obviously, that wasn't the case. And that's when I felt, no, I don't see Pochettino coming back. And I don't think it's mm. the right time for him to come back anyway. And with the Conte, I, I couldn't see that happening. Um, Pipe so dream. I, I think Levy played the game. I think he, he set himself to look like he was trying. Because Pochettino was like, say, oh, I've I made mistakes. Um, let, I've seen my, my errors and my ways. And with Conte, I think he was just trying to send a message like, you know, season renewals. But I think Levy always knew that we were never going to get a manager, you know, of top class. I think it was just always going to end up. But if he'd done this appointment first, fans would have been even more angry. And I think he, he's very clever. He, he knows how to play the game. Mm. And do, do you think, you know, the manager of Fonseca's ability, he might take a bit of time to kind of get acclimatised to Tottenham. He might get a bit of time to implement his methods. Um, do you think we're probably uh, in for another rough season if we appoint him in terms of him having a bit of a transition season? Then maybe next year we might see what oh, he can really do. Because, you know, even with Pochettino, it took him a bit of time to uh, everyone to get adjusted to him. So you think we could be very similar this season? Yeah, I think so. I don't see anything changing much. Um, you know, like you say, it does take time. Um, he's probably going to be given the same players to work with because when people talk about clear out, I've never really hardly ever seen, a, you know, much of a clear out at Spurs. It's always maybe two or three players out, two or three in. And also those players coming in, you know, who are they going to be? <laughs> you know, who will probably like... Uh, uh, Take someone like um, get someone like uh, Matic or something, you know, like something like on that scale. Because I can't see us, you know, getting any top players. It's going to be some players that are developing or not as well known, or or, or they, they see something in them. So it will be a long project, you know. So you will have to give him time. So I can't see us jumping into like Champions League or anything. I know we. We still, I think, still got an OK squad, you know, some players. But, yeah, I, and I think the players will, they'll, like, try hard in the beginning for him, like they do with every manager. But they're just going to do the same thing. They're just, they're not going to play for him. If he gets upset, the players will just stop playing. And I think we'll probably be in a similar position. And I can't, and he hasn't got the statue to tell them, like, um, like a Conte sort of thing. Um, but either way, uh, if he's too nice or too strict, I I can't see the players, you know, really trying for this club anymore. Yes, one or two, but I I think, yeah, it's going to be a similar season. I'll be very surprised if we, if we do a top four or something. I, I think mm-hmm. we'll be like 
seventh or eighth again, to be honest, mm. in the first season. Yeah, I tend to agree. All right, Jamie, absolute pleasure as always, my friend, and we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks, guys. Cheers, Take Jamie. Easy. Take it easy. Nice one. All right, who have we got next? We have got Alan J. Hi, Alan, how are you? You all right, boys? Yeah, all good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, okay. Um, sort of. Uh, I'm all right. I'm trying to sift through this news of uh, of, of Paolo Fonseca, um, yeah. and it just seems strange, you know, that we swap we swapped one Portuguese for another, and in fact, <laughs> you know, and basically swapped managers with Roma. Yeah. And uh, and looking at their looking at their season last season, yeah, they got to the semi final of the Europa League, but in a in a in a league like the Italian La Liga. Um, or no, yeah, Serie A, Serie A, oh, Italian league. Um, that was thank you. Yes, <laughs> brain fade, brain fade. Uh, call it call it age. But um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, in, in that kind of league, to 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 finish seventh with a with a team with the with the pedigree of Roma or a Lazio, it isn't great, is it? Really? I mean, you might expect that of say Napoli or someone coming up from Serie B. But um, but but Roma coming seventh, okay, semi final of the Europa League, that could be down to luck. I'm not really sure we're not getting another one with Ramos, really. Hmm. Um, that's my my issue with it. Are you are you worried that it is Spurs are set for another season in transition? And do you think if we do say have a have a, another season where we're around sixth, seventh, going for Europa League again, although even if we do show a bit of potential, will he get another season to implement to really see the real uh, Fonseca? Do you think, or do you think he could be out the door after a year if he's not um, producing the goods? Oh, well, is he gone? oddly, no, got kind of that worries me. That's a dub, that's. That, no, yeah. mm. I, that's doubly worrying in a way. I mean, worrying because we all want to see instant success. That's every football fan's like that. Mm -hmm. And yet, on the other hand, we also all want to see a, a, an absolute, you know, a, a solid plan that says we're going to do this, then this, then this. And I think if the if the fan base could be convinced by Fonseca and Levy that, yeah, this is part of the new project and we don't expect anything for the first couple of years, but by year <laughs> four... Oh, sorry, it's all right. <laughs> by, by, year, by year four, um, we expect to be winning X, Y, or Z. We could might be into that, but if they're if they're going to peddle him as a as a as a manager who's going to bring instant success and he doesn't, then like you say, he'll be out of the door and back to square one. And that's what worries me. As a, as someone whose first earliest memory was to the double when I was four years old. Uh, and and uh, for who 1991 actually doesn't seem that long ago. Uh, you know, it, it's still a long time for a team like us to be to be to be this long without a, some kind of um, solid success in the form of silverware. So, yeah, I do see it as a worry that he won't get enough time, and I'm also slightly worried that he'll need a lot more time, and we're going to have another three or four years of what we've had for the last two. But you know, that's being a fan. And anyway, that's my two pennies. Alan, who does your uh, does your dog want Fonseca in? Two dogs and they're divided on it. Betsy thinks mm, maybe we'll go for the Portuguese. Tegwin would rather have a Welsh ma manager with a name like his. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you so much for coming Cheers, on. Alan. Thanks for coming on, mate. See ya. See you Good next see time. You. Thank Cheers, you. Alan. Uh, that was brilliant. Cool. Uh, next, we are welcoming Ashley Chanel back to the channel. I think you're on mute. Oh. Oh, it took him straight off. Uh, I, um, we'll I get you back on in a second. We'll bring you back in a sec, Ashley. Um, is this audio working now? Not just, not just yet. So. I want to, oh, I can hear him, though. Who am I hearing? I'm not sure. Um, All right, well, I'm actually reading this article. Apparently, Antonio Conte reveals what stopped him from replacing Jose Mourinho as Tottenham head coach. What was it? Staff and wages? Probably. Um... He apparently was talking to Gazetta, Gazetta della Sport and he said, money is not my obsession. I look at projects oh, I saw that, yeah. and I'm ready to stay at home if they don't convince me. I like difficult challenges, but if there is something with a club that does not convince me, I prefer to say no thank you. Um, 
Football London sound that talks are ongoing between Fonteca and Spurs, while it's also believed the new director of football, Paratici, is central to the idea of, of hiring Fonseca. Okay. Well, apparently uh, Conte thought looked at the challenge and thought he might as well stay at home. Mm. Interesting. Um, is Ashley there? Is his audio working? Ashley. Hello? No, nice. I can't hear him. Is it on his end, maybe? Is it on your end or is it on our end? Oh, has he crashed? Hey, you. Can you hear me? Oh, I can yeah, hear you. I can now. hear you. I can hear you, Ashley. Hello? You can hear me. Yeah, yes, I can hear we you. I can hear you now. How are you, mate? Yeah, not bad, thank you. So it must be the headset. I'm at work and I've just taken three minutes off work, so... <laughs> oh, you had to get your uh, something off your chest, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all right. Thank you. Uh, so talk to um, me about Fonseca. Yeah, um, What's your opinion? Um. Well, I mean, I don't know much myself, in fairness, about him. I haven't really read much about him. Um, but, I mean, obviously it's not the brilliant that we wanted you know I wanted Conte myself I mean Pochettino I didn't think was going to happen in fairness I didn't think he was going to come back this soon just after getting the PSG job um I wanted Conte myself but I didn't think that was going to happen in fairness but I wanted it to happen um but yeah I mean it's not the ideal you know exciting manager but we've got to obviously give any manager that walks in a chance. And I'm a little bit more excited about Fonseca than I would have been with Parker or Potter, in fairness. That's just me. That's my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's not brilliant. But at the same time, I think we've got to give him a chance. And we don't know what he's like and what he's like as a manager. I don't think he's really... I know he was at Roma when he got sacked after a couple of years. Um but I think we've got to give him a chance. We don't know what he's going to implement into the team and what he's planning on doing. Um, obviously, the main problem is obviously Enoch and V. Um, any manager that walks in the door is going to need new players with the players that we've got that are not good enough to get us where we want to be. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that his appointment and um, uh, the director of football, Patrick, um is going to obviously be a new project for us a few players and see where we go really with it but yes yeah, not the brilliance but at the same time I do think give him a chance before we judge him um, mm. and you never know at the end of the day he could be what we're looking for so do you, do you think the fact that he's quite he's going to turn out to be the not the, not the most popular appointment do you think the fan base will give him the time that he might need to be a success here because he might need about a, a season to get everyone on board in the climatize with tactics or whatnot but you know it might that might mean finishing the season seventh or eighth or and having another season of transition do you reckon he'll get that time considering he's a bit of an unpopular appointment? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, with the fan base, I probably don't know. I think if he comes in and we, we finish below um, fourth again. Oh, oh I think gone? he's gone. I think he's, I think he's gone. Ashley, sorry, mate. I think you've gone. I think um, there was poor let's... internet there, but um, let's keep going. I think sorry, I... Ashley. Apparently, yeah. Sorry about that, but sorry, um, sorry, good to chat to you again. And I'll really uh, we'll have to speak to you soon. But let's um, bring on Hashim. Gone. Hashim, how you doing, my friend? I think you're on mute. Oh, no, no, oh, no fine. you're back now. You're back, you're back. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can, can hear you. you. Fine, how okay. are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, yeah good we're thanks. doing okay. Good, thanks. Um, what's your opinion on this uh, Fonseca news? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I never even heard of him before, like, you know, last night. Well, I, I knew <laughs> of him, but, you know, I didn't know what clubs he coached, you know. It's a very underwhelming appointment, but then again, you know, no one really knew Pochettino when we got from Southampton. No one really know. No one really knew like Klopp when he went to Dortmund and he went to the final Champions yeah. League. You know, mm -hmm. so um, hopefully he can, uh, you know, just bring a trophy. I take anything at this point. You know, uh, last time Spurs won a trophy, I, I was four. Now <laughs> I'm gonna go to college next year. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting time. a bit long now. 
Well, yeah. let's hope we can win a trophy by the time you get married or something, yeah? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, what Do you think... The, um, you know the fan base are going to be uh, very demanding of him considering he's a, as you say he's a bit of an underwhelming appointment people were pinning for Conte and managers like that do you think the fan base will give him time that he might need because he might need a bit of time uh, I think last year with Mourinho we know he wanted the Premier League title and the Europa mm. League you know that was a lot to ask a lot for him I think the fans just can't be bothered at this point you know we just want fourth it's pretty much all we want that's it <laughs> Yeah, so, and it's not necessarily don't. what the fans want. It's just like mm. I don't think the players will, will like care, <laughs> you mm. know. Or, uh, like uh, if I was Fonseca, I'd be like, you know, really confused as what to do. You know, if you're too hard on the players, the players are gonna, you know, try to sack you by January because they're not gonna play for you. If you're too easy, they're 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 not gonna have the fitness levels to like you know play play good in the Premier League. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, what is going to happen? Seems what's, like anyone is doomed to fail. What's your gut telling you, Hashim? Is this going to work out for us? Um. Uh, what I think is going to happen is he's going to like you know be here for a year or two. We're going to get like fifth or sixth. Then we're going to when Pochettino is done, we're going to get him. You know. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. Gap. To be fair, I wouldn't mind uh, him uh, coming in and then Pochettino taking over in a couple of years. I mean, he's the guy we all want, isn't it? Of course he is. Everyone was pinning for Pochettino, but that ain't going to happen right now. But is it right to appoint... Is when when you appoint someone like Fonseca, it's surely, you know, you have to give him time. You can't just appoint him as a stopgap. 100%. And that's the problem. I feel like we might we might be doing that. You think it's a stopgap? Well, I get that vibe. I'm not sure. Do you I'm guys know, like, the like players he likes to play with? You know, does he like, you know... Big midfielders like you know Sissoko or like you know. Look, I'm I'm not sure about that, but I know he plays a very high line, uh, very attacking football. I know his team at Roma created in the top five chances of uh, the whole of Europe last season. They had they completely underperformed in terms of um, meeting their xG and stuff. They scored a lot less than what their xG actually was. So, I mean, that tells me that um, he can organise a team and get a team playing attacking football. And I and for me, I think that. From what I get from reading about him, I feel like if he did have better players, then he would have done a lot better at Roma. Oh, well, does that mean like I think our wingers will have a better chance than they did under Mourinho? You know, they'll be more advanced probably. Mm. And like I think Bird him Vine. working with Paratici can only be a good thing because obviously Paratici obviously wanted Antonio Conte in, but this Fonseca was his second choice, and it's not just a, a choice out of the blue, is it? I mean, they know each other, so um, hopefully it can work in our favour. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's a lot of hope going to Spurs at the moment and uh, maybe not the best place. But we'll have to wait and see because sometimes a, a manager can, can just be a right fit for a club and we have to maybe Fonseca and Tottenham can just be the right fit. Do you think Gareth Bale uh, will be like coming back I under this new so. manager? I don't think so. I, think, so. No. I think it's unlikely, but... You know, and we and he's got to convince Kane to stay, and he's going to get uh, uh, other players on side. So he's got a big job on his hands, and let's hope he's up to it. Yeah, mm. <laughs> Hashim. Hopefully, next time we speak to you, you're a bit more confident about it. But um, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks. See you. Cheers, Cheers Hashim. Got a few super chats to get through. George Lintot saying. Anyone thought about the Conference League Roma against Spurs? Mm, I nothing. Think, I, I think of everyone I has thought about that ever since Jose went there. Uh, Tin Man 007 says, I thought Romeo said uh, we would be excited. Levy has done it to us again. Went from a Ferrari to a Fiat in a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard Classic. to disagree with that, isn't it? No, can't disagree with that at all. And I completely, it's, it's true. That, that's the most disappointing thing. It's not necessarily, if we would have gone from Fonseca straight away in the summer... Because, cause look, he's been... For, how long has he been available for? Fonseca. Um, you know, since the, the end, end of, of last season. The end of season, yeah. So he's been available. So we've known about his availability. So if we, if we were, if we we were to... we Paratici. Huh? He wasn't on Levy's radar. He was on Paratici's radar. I know. Radar. I'm just saying, if we would have um, gone for him a few, uh, six weeks ago or whatnot, it would have been a bit easier to swallow. Because it would have been a man who'd be like, okay, 
clearly we want him clearly we know he, he's a manager of potential and it's like okay we, we're being decisive we're getting him in early this is the guy we want but now it just feels like we're running out of options we're scrambling around and it's like we're going to get this guy now but I, I look at it the other way I mean we've brought in Paratici to make a decision we've brought in Paratici uh, to take control of the footballing decisions at the club and he's come in and as soon as he's come in he's appointed a manager I mean, we, we asked... Well, we've after been, a failed attempt for another manager. Yeah, uh, well, for, for a very good manager, yeah. Uh, obviously, it was his second choice. Yeah, I'm not denying that. But ultimately, this is his decision. Well, you say his second choice. Who, who knows? Maybe this is just his uh, first choice of who we can afford. But ultimately, he's being paid to make these decisions. That's what his job is. And we've all wanted a director of football to come in to make these decisions. And that's what we've got. Yeah, but yeah. I know, of course, of course. And uh, obviously, he's clearly suggested him. But I, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried he's... Um, this is not necessarily Paratici's first choice. It's, it's the first choice of who we can afford. Yeah, I'm worried he has a list of other names, which would, would, could be a better fit. But Levy is like, we'll just go with the guys on a free. I don't know, because, you know, we we definitely tried to get Pochettino. I don't think that... I think we actually... Yeah, did that's try nothing to do with Paratici, though, obviously. Huh? That's obviously nothing no, to do with that's, Paratici. No, but that's that's in terms of us spending money on a manager. Um, no, because... Uh, no, not not really, because we, we were waiting for him to resign. Yeah, but I think that the the kind of thing about it was that we would still have had to have paid PSG something um, or paid Pochettino to pay PSG or something to buy himself out of the contract I don't think it would have been a free a freebie Pochettino coming here and uh, especially with other managers that we've been linked with as well they've always even Alistair Gold said right at the beginning that money wouldn't be an option in terms of this manager search and we're uh, willing clearly we're, is we're, yeah, get Conte. <laughs> we're willing to um, clearly is an obstacle and we're will, in terms of the manager not the transfer budget I don't know uh, let's get difficult. Ashley Chanel back on Ashley. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah that's better now. That's better. Okay, I don't know uh, what happened. Yeah, I think your internet just went down for a second. But um, what were you saying? Yeah, so I was saying the fan base. Yeah, I don't think, like I said, they will accept it if we don't get um, 4 4 better this season. Um, it, you know, but we do have to give him time. I think any manager deserves a bit of time, uh, especially in the situation I believe we're in. Obviously, we're in quite a bad situation at the moment. Um, obviously we've got brilliant training facility and stadium and stuff like that but in terms of players and motivation I just think we're in a really bad place at the moment obviously we've had now make our third manager now in obviously a couple of seasons um, I think we just need to give him a bit of a chance to finish I mean I hear what you were just saying and I think he is the cheap option I agree um, however I do think Paratici maybe have does see something in him that's going to be right for our fit. Um, I just think that some, yeah, there's something behind the scenes. I think that um, is going on um, with this appointment. Um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, that's all I can say really is just I think we should give him time. I'd like to see him come straight out the ranks and do well, um, as I'm pretty sure we all would. Um, but it might not happen straight away. But obviously, the main thing is to get the players. Uh, we need to get some good players in, uh, especially if Kane does leave. Obviously, that's going to take a big chunk out. Um, and I'm not a massive fan of a lot of our players right now. Yeah, um, there's a couple honest, I would keep, honest. but other than that, no. So a couple I would keep, but apart from that, um, yeah. So yeah, just do what we can do. I'm hoping for the best, but yeah, not the most exciting appointment. But let's hope. You know, we if we all just give him a, a chance and see how we go from there and hope for the best of the next season. All right, all right. Ashley, thanks a lot, man. Thanks see for coming back on. on. Good to see you. Thanks, Dad. Good to see you, Thank mate. You. Speak Bye. to you in a bit. Um, Jory the is in Jorical. the DMs. The Joracle is in the DMs. Um, he just sent us super chat saying he's in the DMs. I'll, I'll read out his DM. He is sent to us on Twitter. He says... The Fonseca pursuit feels like a total Levy special, going for the cheaper, less ambitious manager. If Paratici comes out and says Fonseca is all his decision, then I might get excited about it. To be clear, the only thing that would have convinced me and millions of fans that Levy is changing his ways and finally growing a pair and going for goals in terms of on-pitch glory would have been appointing Poch or Conte with no reservations. Hopefully, 
This work, this the work of Paratici and Fonseca will thrive at Spurs, but this appointment Levy will keep and increase the call. Hashtag Levy out. Yeah, definitely hashtag Levy out. Definitely hashtag Levy out. That's for sure. And I, yeah, I think I think it's just I think he's right in terms of what this move represents, in terms of uh, where the club is heading and, and our decision making. It's again the same thing. Um, same thing that we've been doing for the last 20 years yeah. and that's what the big frustration is unfortunately yeah right, I completely I agree, agree but we can't let this negativity seep through we have to support the man we have to yeah I agree um, let's get Amir on Amir how's it going my friend I'm doing well I'm doing well how are you guys doing uh, yeah like I'm in <laughs> yeah we're good mate we're good mate the sun is shining in London Spurs are on the, on the way to getting a new manager, apparently. Um, what's your opinions on it all? <laughs> Listen, lads, lads, it really doesn't matter who's coming in here. We could get Alex Ferguson out of retirement. It wouldn't change a damn thing. <laughs> At the end of the day, we have players who are not fully motivated to play for the badge, to play for Tottenham Hotspur, to play for the family. And that, that's the issue we're having. Look, we had two of the best managers in the world, guys. We had Potra Mourinho, and our club somehow managed to cock it up, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, who sacks a manager a week before uh, a cup final? It's just, it's, it's unbelievable, really, where we've got to this point. So Fonseca, whoever, I, don't, I really don't think it makes a difference at this stage. You know, you just said it, we need Levy out, we need Enoch out. And we need to push this club into the stratosphere and get us above uh, where we are at the moment. Because we were close. We were so close. We were there, lads. And he didn't put the money in when it was needed. And, so, is, this, uh, and is this another case of him not putting the money in when, he, when we had Conte lined up last week and we couldn't get that deal over the line? And he's gone for a much cheaper, less ambitious option. It's even worse than that, though, isn't it? Because he's, he's conned the fans into thinking you know i've been following your guys stream you know i listened to a few of the other guys that are out there brian daigle mm. look it, it it's not good enough it's not good enough and to get people to renew their season tickets for for vast amounts of money um while saying we're getting potch back and getting everyone excited and then conte someone who's winning titles season in season out I, I, I just think uh, it's too much now. You know, we can say thank you for, for, for getting us the new stadium and the, the amazing facilities and whatnot. But at the end of the day, guys, one little Carling Cup in 20 years is not good enough for Tottenham Hotspur. You know, when, when we were growing up in the 90s, I used to have my sticker book, lads. Do you remember the sticker books that we used to have? And uh, you would see Tottenham, you know, we used to be the winners of the FA Cup, you know, we'd, we'd done the double the, fir the first time uh, in, in Europe with so many amazing things that, that we've done. And, and this is where we're at now. Um, it makes me sad, to be honest, lads. It mm -hmm. makes me sad. Is your gut telling you that um, this guy, what's your gut telling you about this guy? Do you think he's going to make a good appointment? I have no idea, to be honest with you, Ben. You know, I, I obviously I know I know of him and I've I've seen you know his record and stuff, but I couldn't really tell you, you know, how he's going to do. The Premier League is a very very tough league. He's never managed in it before. Um, but then again, I want to put a bit of a positive spin because I know I've been a bit neg negative. So, you know, maybe this Paratici fella that's coming in and with some of the deals that he's done, obviously he's made clubs, Juve, a lot of money. He's done amazing things over there. Is there a possibility that Levy, to to try and bring the fans back on board, will release the purse strings a little bit and let Paratici do what he's got to do? Well, we'll have, knows? To, Your we'll have to see about mine. that one, won't we? We'll have to see. But I think Paratici's first task was to get a manager. It looks as though he's chosen well. Yeah. One of one of his men has been chosen. That's for sure. And um, and the next mm. the next deal that he has to do is get a lot of the Deadwood out of the squad. That's is going to be his next step. And then to raise up funds for for him and Fonseca to go out and pick the players to to bring in. Well, that's it. The Deadwood is key. It's key, Ben. You know, at the end of the day, we've got a few players there that their time has come to an end at Spurs. And to be honest, it came to an end a couple of years ago. It's just because of the manager changes and whatnot that we, we haven't managed to get rid of them. 
And to be honest, you know, I know a lot of Spurs fans, they love Deli Ali, right? Like Deli Ali is someone that Spurs fans love. I would have sold him after his first couple of years at Spurs. We would have got 50, 60, 70 million for him. He's just not got the mentality of a top player. I'm sorry. You know, look at Kane's mentality. Just compare the two. Just compare the two. That's it. Um, I, yeah, I, I so do agree with that. Do. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, you know, that's the situation we're in. I, I can't understand the, the, what's going on with Endon Bele. I was watching his goal the other day, you know, when he looped it over into the corner. What's a goal? He's what's a top a goal? quality player, lads. He's a top quality player. What is going on with him? Why why was Mason not playing him towards the end of the season? And, and why is he not playing a more dominant role at Spurs? I agree with that. And he, he he definitely needs to start being the star of this team and being the central hub because at the moment, he's uh, too much in and out and too much inconsistency. But um, I mean, let me ask you this about the manager. Do you think sure. the fan base will allow him the time that he might need to be to be a success here? Because we all know that when a new manager mm-hmm. coming in, someone like a Fonseca, who's a bit of a project manager, he likes to build his teams up and he, he he might not make an instant impact it might take a bit of time for the for the players to get used to him but do you think the fans given that he's such an underwhelming appointment do you think they'll give him a time that maybe they would have given to another manager i think we need to give him the time because we can't keep this you know uh, Spurs in a bickering going on. We just need to get behind the team at the end of the day. Whatever happens, whether Kane stays for another year, whether he goes, whether we get players in, whether we don't get the best, we just got to get behind the team because we are capable next season of having a decent season. I, I, I'm saying that right now. We, even with the players that we have now, you know, we, st- we still, with the players we got now, should be um, battling for top four. So if we get rid of a little bit of the deadwood, and if we get a couple of players in, you know, I've heard you guys speaking about a few of them. There's definitely potential out there. And who knows, you know, maybe we can nick another little Deli Alley from the championship for five, ten million as well. That that's something that, that maybe Paratici can look at. Um so I think we need to give him time, even though he's he's underwhelming, and get behind the team and, and just see what we can do. You know, we have this new uh, it's like cup winners cup revamped yeah. um so go for it go for all the tournaments we've got the fa cup i'd love to bring home an fa cup lads we've been so underwhelming in the fa cup recently i would love i would love i saw leicester this season do you see the joy on their fans face lads the joy you know and and congrats to them you know they, they deserved it they deserved it so i really want to see us fighting on all fronts uh next season let's just get behind the team as much as we can we have to kind of deal with the Levy out, Enoch out situation. That's something that, you know, you you guys are pushing and a lot of the fans are pushing. Um, I think that that's going to be key at the end of the day to solving uh, our issue of pushing on to the, the top, top, top level, you know. All right, Amir, thanks a lot for coming on, my friend. Cheers, Amir. We'll see you next time. No worries. Lads, lads, just, just before uh, uh, I go, is it all right if I just give a quick shout out to the to the channel that I'm uh, doing? Yeah, yeah, please. Open Peace podcast, and it would, be one, it would be absolutely wonderful as well if we could get the We Are Tottenham family behind the podcast. And, you know, we're trying to build dialogue between Israelis and Palestinians. We're really getting people together, having real genuine conversations. So it'd be wonderful if, you know, we could get the Tottenham family behind us. Go over and subscribe to the Open Peace podcast and come on you Spurs. And come on England, let's, uh, let's bring that in home. <laughs> Absolutely season. brilliant. Come on, it's uh, coming, coming home, home, Amir. It's coming home. Everyone go check out the Open Peace podcast as well. we'll I'm see. sure it's we'll great work. We'll Cheers, Amir. See Thanks soon, a lot, mate. mate. See you soon. You too, mate. Uh, we've had some updates from Alistair Gold since Amir was on. Um, uh, some, not, some not very good ones. Is it not very good ones? No. Why? What's it saying? Well, what, what, what are you reading? Um, that many within Tottenham doubt that Daniel Levy will ever relinquish too much power at the club. How is that a good one? Huh? How is that a good one? I never said it's good. I, I said just, it's not good. I'm you just reading a it. few... Uh, what else have you seen? That's that it. it. That's what I'm saying. Oh. That's not a very good one, though, is it? No, it's not. Uh, Steve Hitchin is believed to be unaware of the moves to bring in Fabio Paratici. And, and one said, person yeah. inside Tottenham told Football London that the club had chased dreams in their manual search for since Jose Mourinho left. Yeah, and that's it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah. 
that's obvious. We can see that. Mm-hmm. And um, that you know, Pochettino and Conte were both pipe dreams. And uh, unfortunately, now we now we're staring with reality of who we're going to appoint. But that one does worry me when he says some uh, many in the club believe Levy would ever relinquish too much power, and that is the problem. He loves it too much. It the problem, problem is he. Lo- it's not so much that he's got that power. It's that I think he enjoys it. That's the thing. He enjoys that power. He enjoys getting those deals done. He enjoys the negotiations, the toing and froing. That's what he lives for, and I and it's going to be very hard for him to step away from that. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Um, and it says as well, Tottenham understood to want Hitchin to remain within their structure. Sorry, say that again. Tottenham are understood to want Steve Hitchin to remain within their structure. I don't know in what capacity, though. What's he going to no, do? don't know. Is don't he know. the one that's going to be like, oh, I hate transfer windows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's bring on Alex Samuels. Let's see what he has to say. Alex, how you doing, mate? Hi, Alex. Uh, mm, meh. Meh. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was very lucky because um, last yesterday, when the news was coming out, I was out with my friends. And you know, having having a few drinks, and um, yeah, I was. So I, you were I, on I the table laughed. singing uh, Fonseca's Blue Army. <laughs> That's what you were doing. Exactly. I, I I just laughed when I saw it. To be honest, um, I, I I thought I thought it was complete rubbish, and then more and more came out about it. And I woke up this morning, and the reality just really set in. This is our manager. This is this is what's happening now. This is Tottenham in 2021, and here we are. Everything's Everything's going downhill. Well, is it is it important not to be too downhearted on the incoming appointment, despite the fact, yes, it's not Conte or Pochettino who we would have hoped, but maybe this guy could be the right fit for us with what we need right now. Um, what, well, what do we need right now? We need our key players to stay. We need fresh blood going into the squad. Um, not just any fresh blood. We need talented fresh blood going into the squad. And... I don't feel like this appointment achieves either of those two things. I don't think the <clears throat> the talent such as Kane and Son are going to be convinced by uh, this appointment. Even players like Endon Bele, um, why would you know? He, he's he. I think Endon Bele sees us as a stepping stone club to move to move up to a different club at some point. And I, I don't see why really they'd be convinced. And as for new blood, what does this guy have any managerial pull? Conte has managerial pull. Mm-hmm. That's that's for sure. But look at our position. Look at what competition we're going to be playing in. I don't see a lot of European talent fancying coming to Tottenham at the moment. So that's why I just don't. I don't believe that this appointment is the right one. It's not. It's not the new guy's fault. You know, he's he's managed what he's managed. He's achieved what he's achieved. That is it. And if we're going for him, that's our problem, isn't it? It's not. It's not his. If he comes in, of course we'll all, we'll all back him for. You know, we'll back him for the time that you know seems appropriate. To, to give it, give him enough time to, you know, set out what he wants to do, um, and then we'll go from there. But it's just so underwhelming. This, it, I, I, I'm so. Why not go for Nuno? It seems like the much smarter appointment, in my opinion. Um, I think I actually and, prefer this to Nuno. Would, I think really? I prefer this to Nuno. I think also when you look at it as well, like. <laughs> This guy's got more pedigree coming in than uh, when Pochettino came into us as a manager. True, true, but we're at a very different stage in as a as a club. Pochettino, the thing obviously. Is, the thing is, the club, the club stature is at a bit uh, is at a completely different stage. I agree with that, but where the squad is at, I think it, it's very similar to where we are, where we were when uh, Pochettino first came in. Yeah, that that maybe that's that's probably agreeable. I mean, look, the. The, the squad's just so it's 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 lifeless in my opinion. It, it needs so much more fresh blood. And look, I mean, some th- I mean, every manager's got some skeletons, don't they? Where things which I'm going to and and all of them have come up on social media about this guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he, he kept, went to a press conference once to Zorro, didn't he? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. come on, uh, you know, and he apparently made <laughs> six substitutions once and everything. And yeah, you know, it's just. Everything's coming up about here, and I'm sure the hierarchy have taken notice um, at Tottenham at the at the basically fury um, of of the fan base about this, which I think is rightfully so. But I, I do see your point. It is it is a 
appointment, which I think and Alistair Gold's new piece, yeah, he said it, it's reality for Tottenham, isn't it? This is this is reality biting back, and mm. I, I I agree with that. But I thought really this whole managerial search was meant to be more than that, to be honest. And I do feel like there were, I mean, more things potentially we could do um, in trying to attract different managers. But I don't, I don't know. You know, we didn't even. We, we tried pulling away managers from different projects, from different clubs. None of that worked. Um, and in the end, we're going with the cheap option. What does that What does that say, really? A manager who's going to work within the ownership, uh, work, mm-hmm. work within the current um, squad. And, um, I mean, I think his net spend at Galatasaray and Roma was both around minus 20 million. Yeah. So, um, so that, me- that says a lot, doesn't it, as well? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we, know, we know that we're not going to spend a lot of money this summer whatsoever. Uh, I, I just, I, I, I know that uh, I know that you guys said maybe the money could be there, but I, I just don't see that, and it, it's just, it's just so disheartening. This, it's just so disheartening. I'm so disappointed that this is where we're now ending up with getting this guy who he just doesn't have the 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 pedigree to be managing at Tottenham at the moment. I, I we needed to see him, at, uh, a, you know, maybe in the Premier League or maybe a bigger club on, on the continent. And then we can really see what this guy's made of. It just seems very early, and it does raise questions about the um, well, I think it's called general manager Paratici. It do- it already raises some immediate questions about him, in my opinion. I know that may be a little unfair considering he hasn't been formally announced. But if this is the guy who you're bringing in to manage Tottenham, players with Harry Kane, Kim Min Son, you know, superstars, who has actually not done very well, um, you know in comparison to what we'd want, uh, you know, managing with a lot of success. He, he hasn't really hasn't really achieved that yet. And so it's just very, it, it raises a lot of questions to me about, you know, Daniel Levy said, I've, you know, I've got this ambition for Tottenham. I do want to invest in this goal. We want to get a, a great manager, Nagelsmann, Rodgers, Conte, uh, the, the list goes on, the managers who've missed out on. Honestly, I'd rather get Graham Potter. Than this guy, I would. I'd really rather Graham Potter um, than this guy. At least he has a Premier League experience, and also, you know, we we know that he's got uh, great statistics. I know that's not always fair to. Well, apparently, apparently Fonseca is like the Potter of Serie A. That's what they. That's what they say because his like his statistics are quite similar to Potter in that aspect. Like uh, Roma have significantly underperformed their underperformed their expected points and things like that, and they create a lot of chances which they don't finish, maybe because of quality of play. So from that point of view, um, maybe he's seen him as a very uh, cheaper um, alternative and maybe a higher qu- profile manager than Potter in that aspect. I I, I probably wouldn't agree as a high profile manager than Potter. Um, in, in well, he's opinion. won stuff. He's been at bigger clubs than Graham Potter has been at. So, in that sense, he probably is. He has, but I, f- I feel like Graham Potter has worked. He's worked in the Premier League, and while I always, you know, that hasn't, it's not always guaranteed that it's going to be um, mean it's successful. You know, I, the thing, the thing I look at is I'm, I think Chelsea are a great example of this. They bring in a manager, and you can very quickly see if it's going to work or not. We can, and, and you know, with, with Tuchel, it, it seemed immediately that it was going to work. Um, and 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 I do I do wonder, you know, are we gonna how we, how is the squad going to be playing in the first couple of months of the season? But to be honest with you, I I kind of just cast Tottenham aside in my mind for the next couple of weeks. It's all about the Euros for me. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I I just I just really want to see uh, England do well. I'll worry about Tottenham later. We're not going to be getting any signings um, probably soon until we offload some players. So I think everyone just needs to really um, enjoy enjoy that and worry about Tottenham later but I, I mean Alex you say you say like Potter's got better pedigree than him and what have you but I mean he's achieved he has achieved some stuff in his career um this Fonseca yeah. he has I but mean he he's, has, he's won but... nine trophies in his career he took an unknown Portuguese team and Paco Ferreira to the Champions League the year after he left they got relegated uh Braga he, he won their first trophy in, in 50 years. Shakhtar, he won three consecutive domestic doubles. Um, and in Roma, he took them to a Europa League semi-final, which is their second biggest uh, European run in 30 years. Okay, but this, but I, I just don't think it matches up to the stature of Tottenham. I feel like this is a, this is a great, bit great manager for um, perhaps a, I don't know, a... 
may may Brighton or um, you know with all due respect, obviously to these clubs, it feels like it's maybe a lower down the Premier League appointment. It might it'll probably be a great appointment for them, but mm. for us and where we're at now, where actually we have to, we've got two jobs of keeping our best players who um, some want to leave and also need to freshen up the squad. This this manager this appointment doesn't achieve either of those things. So what's the point? We at least achieve one of those things. Get, oh, my goodness, like come on, we're not gonna. I don't see us advancing. Who who did you expect what's us to? Who did you expect us to appoint? I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I would have. Conte seemed like the best option, but I do agree there were some obvious question marks over that because Conte was always a pipe dream, in my opinion. It was it was a pipe dream that we should have known that we knew was a pipe dream, and what we still went into the negotiations, and Conte also went into the negotiations, and you know we everyone kind of knew that this was a bit of an odd fit, and it was it was a, we all know it was a farce in the end, but mm-hmm. I don't know I think that there are still better options available in my in my opinion I don't you know this guy there are there are obvious there's going to be positives and negatives about every manager. Clearly, this guy's won a lot, but it hasn't been at the level which we expect. You know, Ten Hag also seems like a much better. I would, I would love Ten Hag, but it seems like Paratici doesn't appreciate him um, to be, you know, to be what Tottenham need. And if that's the case, then then fine. But I, that that would have been my first choice in the current circumstances. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just it's been a, this whole managerial search overall. Just really, as you guys said, sums up where we are. Really, you know. Yeah. We don't. It we're, in, we're in two minds. Do we go with you know mm. a, a manager who's going to conserve this squad and get the best out of them, or someone who's going to um, you know freshen up the squad? But we don't even have the funds available f- to do, to do that. So that's why the, uh, Danny, it's clear that the Tottenham hierarchy have been two minds. It's t- having going into negotiations of Conte and getting younger, fresher managers. It's two completely different directions. At least have a clear vision and stick to it. When you go into when you go into finding a manager, which we just haven't done, it just it speaks volumes. And um, I agree with that. Yeah, I just I I don't know. It's it's very disheartening at the moment. Well, but look, well, you've got to give him time. You have to have every manager appointment, don't you? Because uh, it's not it's not his fault. Of course, he's going to snap snap our hand off to get mm-hmm. a Tottenham job. So of course. you know, uh, I, I'll I'll give I'll give it I'll give him I'll give him the time that he deserves, and then we'll see. You know, if it could it could be a disaster. Could be really good, but remember, Poch, as you as you said, Pochettino was a you know it was a, he was our second choice. I think it was Van Gaal was our first at the time. And look how that turned out. But generally, Enoch. Have this been is lucky. our like tenth choice. It, exactly, <laughs> and Enoch have been lucky when they've um, they found gems. I've I've said this before. Pochettino yeah, was a true. gem in, in the dirt. And look, for for all we know, this could be another. We we don't know, but the evidence the evidence that we can see does not speak to that. And so that's what I've got to go with for the moment, to be honest. All right. All right, Alex. But I just, before you go, I just think it's worth, I just think it's very important for us to kind of back him from the beginning and not let any negativity seep through to him. The board, 100%. I I can completely see that. But um, this guy needs our full backing from the, from the, from the get go. No, I I, I do, I do agree. I do think that we, as I said, we have to back him. It's the, it's what I'm really angry about is that the direction the club's going in. That's what I'm angry about. And you're right, yeah, that has to be pointed at the board. I want to see, you know, his, when for, when, the, when the guy comes in, I want to see his players coming in that he wants at the club, you know, and hopefully he'll get he'll get that chance. I, I don't know if that's likely or not, because he seems like he's got to work within the current squad. Um, but, and, and, see, and see how that goes. We know this current squad is probably around, probably, what, fifth place really should be maybe I, I don't know maybe there's some debate on that maybe fifth maybe sixth, really yeah, it's top four it's hard to, it's hard to know isn't it really where yeah. the squad should be because we've got great players it has it been the management or you know we, we don't really know um yeah and so we will just have to judge as the season goes on how he's doing look at look at the results that's it's a results business and that that's it that's it really but i do agree we have to we do have to back him back whoever comes into the that's whoever comes into the Tottenham job. That's just what we have to do as fans. Um, but the, 100% the anger should be directed at the ownership and just the, the general direction of this club at the moment because that is what I'm really concerned about and feel like it's it's a direction which is going to nowhere at the moment. All right, Alex. Absolute pleasure as always, mate. And we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers, Alex.
All right. Looking he... at this, looking at this tweet though, it's quite interesting. It's from um, it's from that manager analysis website. I can't remember what it's called. I think it was run by Statsbomb, but I can't remember. It basically does analysis on all, all the managers. Talk to me. What are they saying? Huh? What are they saying? So Fonseca's they go to his, they, they go to his key yeah. traits. Fonseca's <laughs> key traits as a manager allows the opposition to dominate once ahead. <laughs> Relies progression on a few key players. Relies on set pieces to create chances. Sounds like Jose Mourinho. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Which is worrying if it's true. I hope uh, that these guys are not accurate, but that's what they're saying his, his key traits are. Well, you shouldn't say that just before Stelios comes oh, on. That'll no. give him more oh, ammunition. That'll give him more ammunition. <laughs> but let's, let's bring on Stelios hey, Stel. uh, from Tottenham away. Stel, how's it going, mate? How you doing, guys? Pleasure to be on the show as always. Can you hear me well? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. You look like uh, you're getting some string ready to uh, maybe wrap it around someone's neck. <laughs> 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 yeah, getting it ready. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, you know, you know when you're agitated. Uh, yeah, I, I like. I need to fidget with something in my hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just. Look, this, this. Let's get straight to the point. This is a disaster, what Tottenham have done with the director of football and the manager. This is... Uh, I've been supporting this club since 1987. That's that's when I first began to understand football, like offsides and that. Obviously, as a kid, you support Tottenham, but when you really begin to understand it, it was about 87. And in all the years I've supported this club, I feel more disappointed and dejected and just not enthusiastic at all this season coming up than ever before. Even in the 90s when it wasn't great, at least we knew what we were. We were average and we just didn't expect much. Whereas now, we're not that stature of club. Okay, we haven't won trophies to put us any higher than what we were in the 90s. But as a, in terms of stature, we are, we are bigger. And mm -hmm. this, is, this, is a, this is a big step backwards in so many ways, guys. In so many ways. Is it, in what is, ways? It, is the disappointment more palpable because of what happened last week with the talks breaking down with Conte? Like, for example, if we would have um, targeted Fonseca straight away um, in the summer uh, when the season ended, just after he left Roma, it would have been very clear that this guy was definitely on our radar from the start and it would have been clear that he was highly thought of. But the fact that we've waited around for so long, 50 days... To, to, to get him in or uh, or even look at or even seriously talk to him and he's been on a free pretty much all that time does that kind of make the pal disappointment a bit more even even greater it definitely makes it more greater but the day we sat Jose without a replacement and brought in Ryan Mason I, I was apoplectic when that happened and I and I and I was saying it on our channel I was saying it on the social media channels and other people's channels that you know, Ryan Mason was a, 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 an atrocious appointment at the time. And the, 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 the way I look at it is this. So you've gone and got a director of football who everyone praises. It's not hard to attract talent when you're at the biggest club in Italy, one of the biggest clubs in the world. You can pretty much guarantee trophies every season. You can offer Champions League football pretty much every season. And... Look at the signings that Paratici made at Juve. None of them came when Juve weren't doing well. They all came because Juve were at the top. And look at the wages some of these players were put on. Like Aaron Ramsey was on, was it 400 grand a week? 400, Crazy yeah, money, yeah. right? So you've got a director of football that worked in an environment completely the opposite to Tottenham. And you think, oh, let's get that guy to Tottenham. No, you could have put Hitchin at Juve. And he would have got most of those deals done because he had the criteria and the ammunition to go out there and get what he wanted. So, wrong director of football. Ragniak or Campos worked at clubs that didn't have all those offerings to players and they unearthed top talent. That's the kind of director of football you should be bringing in at Tottenham. Look at your club. Look at what other people's environments that they worked in were and align the two. This is a misalignment of director of football and club. As for the manager, this is the Premier League. Look, look at what we have to try and overcome to be successful. Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City, all of them have got sensational managers. All of them. Are you telling me Fonseca is going to compete with them? 
Are you, is, like, what planet are the fan base on if they think that's going to happen? And not just them. Look at the levels below. David Moyes, Brendan Rodgers, they finish above Tottenham. They've got experience in the Premier League. They know this league. He's coming to a league from Seca where he's got to compete against Tuchel, Pep, Klopp, Rodgers. He's going to have six, seven London derbies a season. This, this, is, this is, again, a misalignment of manager. If we went and got Conte and we got Paratici, I would have said, brilliant. Because now I know he's only coming to Tottenham because we're going to back him. And the reason he hasn't come is because we're not backing him. So Paratici and Conte would have made sense because the intent from Tottenham would have been there. If you're not going to go for that, the alternative is you do a five-year project. Right, who are good project managers that can complement youth, existing players and new players at a reasonable price? Who can do that? Poch, Nagelsmann, Ten Hag. And then you get in a Campos or a Ragniak to complement it. This is a misalignment in all directions. You've taken a bit from there, a bit from there. Let's shuffle that across. And you know what? We'll make this menu. We'll serve it up to the fans. Yeah, that'll work. No, it's not. This is a disaster. On your on your point about Paratici, I mean, he came in on the back of Juventus being terrible. He came out on the back of two Juventus teams that finished seventh in the league in two consecutive seasons. And before that, yes, they finished third in the league, but that was just after being promoted from Serie B after their match fixing allegations and stuff like that. So, I mean, it is a okay. We weren't uh, the stature of Juventus, and they were still of a massive stature, but. They were still a very club in, in massive crisis when Paratici came in. And then on the back of his work, they won seven or eight uh, titles, domestic titles in a row. It's, it's, it's not off the back of his work, um, Ben. It's off the back of Juventus being ha able to have the pulling power. Juventus is still the richest club in Italy. Juventus is still one of the so-called, let's say, top 10 elite clubs in the world. It's easy to get that up and running quick, quick, quickly. At Tottenham, you're not... In, in Italy, you've only got two clubs you've really got to worry about if you're at Juventus, Inter Milan and Napoli. The past five years, they're the two clubs that have really been knocking on the door to, 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 to topple Juventus. In England, but when, when Paratici United, came in, AC Milan were the best team there. AC Milan won their way down uh, ages ago, man. They, 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 fair, fair enough, he came in at a point, you make, this, you make a fair point, that he came in at a point where it wasn't the best, but it was very quickly gonna gonna resolve itself. It's like Man United. If Man United got relegated, I guarantee you, within two three years, they'd be back up in that top six, knocking on the door because they've got the global fan base. They've got the income from it to back it. They've got the, the they've got the support. Investors will be attracted to that club. Players will always want to play for Juventus in Italy, regardless. We 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 we, we the competition in in Britain, uh, sorry in England, is far tougher than any other European league. No mm -hmm. league is as competitive as this one, which means you've either got to go all in with a plan and a lot of uh, cash pumped into that plan, or you've got to do what we did with Poch, which was let's put a project in place and, 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 and let's build it up. But, 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 but when Poch did well, Man City were, were wobbling, Arsenal won the demise, Man United were in turmoil after Fergie left. Yeah, the competition yeah. wasn't as rife. Right now, Look how tough the competition is. This is this is I think this is a misguided plan. I don't think it's been thought out very well. I think they're just almost winging it. I I, I do not see an alignment of the people coming in with what the level of club we are and what the true competition is going to be for us. I, I, this is my prediction. We're gonna we're gonna have a shaky start to the season. At some point, we'll pick up, and I reckon we'll go on a bide. I reckon we'll do well. But then that moment will come, guys. It will come. The wheels will go flying off, and we'll be having these conversations again, like we've been doing for the past two months. That it, it will come under this regime. Stel, do you think um, the fan base uh, with Fon cause Fonseca's appointment is gonna is gonna be seen as quite underwhelming by a uh, probably the majority of the fans. You know, yeah. will he get the time that he probably needs to succeed? Because he, he if he does have a shoddy first season, we finish seventh eighth with a bit of good moments, a bit of bad moments, a bit like Poch's first season. We gave Poch another season, but will Fonseca? Do you reckon he'll have that time, or do you reckon he'll be if with one bad season he'll be out? If we don't get back into the Europa Cup, he's gone. Daniel Levy's a money man. 
Uh, last season, Arteta went on that kind of 9-10, that 9-10 game bad run at Arsenal. Do you remember that? November, mm-hmm. December. He kept his job. Uh, jog. <laughs> he kept his job. If, if, if something similar happened, Fonseca's gone. And the questions will have to be asked immediately about the director of football who recommended him. But the reality is what? We put this director of football in, so Levy's now got a smoke screen. So if it goes tits up, Levy can say, yeah, but he's the guy picking the manager. He's the guy picking the players. It just takes the heat off Levy, this. If if we really, really wanted to win trophies, guys, you would have got in a top manager like Conte and a, and, and, and someone that, that, that can work with money and and, 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 and and have full control of decision-making at a high-spending level, like Paratici. Or, like I said, you do the project. Get in a Campos or a Ragnac that are proven at average clubs, bringing in brilliant talent and supporting a project manager, a Ten Hag, a Poch. But we've done neither, guys. We've done a bit of one and a bit of the other. And we've done that middle bit, which, for me, makes no sense. Can you see a plan in what's just happened here? I do, I do tend to agree with you. I think in, in the sense that... Um the plan hasn't really been well, well thought of and I, I well f- thought out. And I think the fact that we went for Conte so strongly last week and all of a sudden we've switched the record and now going for Fonseca and also on a free um, does say a lot about well, where the hierarchy is at at the moment. However, if, if Paratici has chosen him, then and that, well, isn't that what we've wanted? Someone to come in and make footballing decisions? I, I, I never wanted a director of football at Tottenham because I've been here and seen it and done it before. Camoli, Arneson, Baldini, Mitchell. We've, 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 we've done this too many times. This does not work because whatever you and I think, Ben, and whatever your listeners are thinking today, all Spurs fans, at some point, Levy will meddle. There is no way he's going to take a complete step to one side. Even if it's budget control, he's meddling. If Paratici says, look, I found this defender. He's absolute world class, a Van Dyke or a Ruben Diaz, but we've got to pay 75 million. Levy will get involved, whether it's trying to drive the price down to 40 million, whether it's trying to um, uh, put in clauses and stipulations that then puts off the contract, uh, the deal from going ahead. He will meddle at some point. And for me, that's why a director of football at Tottenham, I don't think will ever work. Mm. Look, that's, I think, why, I, I, that's why That's why. if Conte did come in, it would have worked because Conte would have only have come if we were going to change the way we behaved in the transfer market. And then that, and, and, and then I would have put faith in the director of football because I would have said, you know what? Conte's here. He don't muck about. He only comes to a club that knows he's going to back him and he's going to have controls. So a director of football, that will work now because Levy has, forgive, has foregone that. You know, how on earth have we got? How on earth are we signing a manager when the director of football hasn't even signed his contract? <laughs> True. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, we haven't got over yet. Yeah, look, guys. If he does come in, and if Paratici does uh, sign, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I know this is controversial. I can't back this. I'm sick and tired of all of this. It's, it's been going on for 20 years. I will not back it. I will go to the game. I will support my team. But I'm not getting behind it in the sense of, you know, how I would have gotten behind previous managers at Tottenham. Because, like I said to you, I honestly believe we will do well at some point. Well as in getting to that top six, maybe knock on top four. But the wheels will come off. And it's, it's like... What will it take I, for you I to back the regime? Massively, massively not, not, wrong. not the ownership, but the, uh, the management regime of the, of the footballing club. Ben, I honestly believe as long as Daniel Levy is chairman of the club, I, I'm struggling to ever back it again. I really that's 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 kind of where I'm at with the club. I really am. And I've seen nothing to convince me of otherwise. I've not heard any fan put an argument towards me that I can't break down and not not dismantle their argument, but but put a question back to them that they can actually give me an answer with enough substance for me to say, Okay, I've changed my mind. Yeah. I, I just feel the club the club has now got to that point where we are a property development and entertainment business. And I, I just don't We've got a nice new golf course, team. though. Listen, if that gets whacked in with the uh, annual uh, season ticket renewal, I'm well up for it. I don't mind a bit of golf. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But, 
Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to come on and be negative and downbeat and downhearted. I just, I just want to be honest with how I, I see it and my opinion. That's all it is. I'm just trying to be honest with what I truly feel about this. And I, like I said, guys, I really hope I'm wrong because to see Tottenham win trophies is why we is what we all want. But I just don't see this as a clear and concise plan. I just see, I just, I just feel like we've gone into a pick and mix shop. Yeah, we'll have a few cola bottles, a couple of. Um, uh, Milky mice. We'll have uh, some of those cherry ones, and oh yeah, that square sweet looks nice. Let's put it into a bag, shake it about. There we go. That's that's the plan. I I just don't see a clear and concise plan and forward thinking with what we've done here. Mm. Yeah, I think you make some good points, Del. I really do think you make some good points. I, I think Fonseca isn't is. I, I think what you're absolutely right in terms of the link between him and Paratici is um, not as strong as it could have been when if we if brought someone like Conte in because it would have been two people who used to being at the very top, fighting at the very top for and being on the same page. And I do think it is a bit of a mix and match, but hopefully I've just mm. got to hope that Paratici has a plan for what Fonseca can bring and hopefully he'll know uh, what Fonseca is good at and they can develop what players are going to bring in and kind of shape the team in their own image that's what I'm hoping for but I do think you're I think you make some really stellar stellar points as they say <laughs> Stella from <laughs> Stellios stellar points <laughs> excellent very well done <laughs> Yeah, I do think you some a lot of people, a lot of people in the commentary are agreeing with what you're saying, and I think you do make some great points. But let's just hope that um, it all works out for the best. See, the, w- w- one more thing, guys. You know, the, the one thing we really needed to do, and I, I do believe it was our last last chance, was to keep Kane and possibly Son. Had we made that statement signing with a statement plan going forward. I think Kane would have given it just one more year. Now, if you're Kane, you, you're not staying for this. You simply aren't. And unless unless Spurs stun us, absolutely stun us, and they go and spend 150 million on three world class players, and we're like, whoa. No, but yeah, enough? but the thing is, Stel, if we were going to do that, we would have, Conte would be our manager right now. That's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, correct. That's why I said stun us because <laughs> it would be yeah. stunning but it would make no I, sense I, I, what's the point of spending big in the market now yeah. if we do and then not having contests no that doesn't that doesn't compute with me it's like i'll be i'll be i'm not going to be obviously not going to be angry if you spend big money but i'll be like if we're spending big money why the hell is Conte not our manager right now it doesn't make any sense so clearly we're not going to spend money it's obvious isn't it yeah we're not we're, uh, yeah look <laughs> i think it's clear as soon as conte said no we now know what the plan is. We're not ambitious. That's that's mm-hmm. that's the reality of it. That 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 was clearly made by by the board by not bringing in Conte, and I do believe Kane is going this summer. I said it two months ago, and then the breaking news last month just confirmed what I was thinking. I do believe Kane will go. We'll probably go to the last day of the transfer window, and we'll have a whole summer of stress and headache. Is he going? Is he not? Oh my God! This club's now come in with the crazy bid. I do think he'll go, and 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 when he goes. Fonseca from day one is also, is already starting on the back foot because without Kane we are we are top ten at best. He, he he's he's too important in terms of assists and goals scored to lose him. So I th- I think even from day one this new manager is going to be up against it, and that's the reality of not. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he just went. He's gone. Um, well, all right. it was great to hear from him. Stel, that was an absolutely brilliant call. Thank you very much for coming on. Very passionate from uh, Stelios as always. Is there anyone else waiting? No. All right, so I think that is it for today. I mean, we've still, we've got wow, a lot two of hours, viewers. fifty. Got a lot of viewers. Well, on the t- tell them about uh, the uh, the um, events we're holding. Yeah, so weekend. obviously we're holding three uh, England events at the moment. At least all, three, th- exactly. At least three for all three group stage games at the Euros. So obviously the first game is this Sunday against Croatia, two p.m. kickoff. So I really want you guys to come and join us, have a beer with us, uh, come and chat with us about the game, <laughs> take your minds off Tottenham for a bit uh, at the start of the Euros so look we're running these events the beers are going to be flowing with every ticket purchase you get a free beer Uh, so come and watch the game it's going to be good weather the drinks are going to be flowing and I'm really looking forward to seeing you all there so link is in description below if you do want to come and join us and we've also got uh, the score Torito um, deadline coming thick and fast as well so if you want to be in it to win it we I've got a hundred pounds up to grabs to give to you guys 
all you have to do is uh, click the link in the description about the Score Torito app, uh, go and join it. That will take you directly to our league and the winner of the league will win £100. And what you have to do to win the league is you have to make your predictions for the Euros. Each and every game, you need to predict the outcome. You need to predict the winners of the Euros and also the golden boot winner. And if you become top of the league, um, you can get yourself £100 and it's completely free to play. So why not join? All right. So there you have it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It's been a mammoth, a mammoth uh, good morning, Tottenham. It's not morning anymore. It's near. It's late afternoon already. It's nearly 2 o'clock. But uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, on, you Spurs. Spurs.